hosting Grambling States. Good afternoon, Matt Peterson with Ken Moore, the former Texas running back. Bethune Cookman is coming off a bye week. Meanwhile, for Grambling State, a very good first half at Jackson State last week, but a very tough second half. So, Ken, what does this SWAC opener mean for both teams? Well, man, both of these teams come into the ball game today with high expectations. The SWAC opener for both ball clubs, they want to get off to tremendous starts. For Grambling, they have a new start. New head coach Hugh Jackson bringing his NFL style of offense to the SWAC. And for Bethune Cookman, they want to build upon it. They had a big 31 14 win over Grambling last year. So, you know, Grambling Tigers are going to be looking for revenge. Bethune Cookman trying to settle on a quarterback. They've used three so far, but the featured QB has been Jalen Jones. Yeah, Jalen Jones, 6'4 junior. He's a natural leader. He brings a business-like approach to the ball game. Sometimes he may try to be too perfect, but he is dynamic. Two weeks ago against South Carolina State, over 100 yards on the ground, and he has some dynamic weapons on the outside to get the ball to. In his first season after transferring from Mississippi Delta Community College for Grambling, it's a bona fide number one, Quartarius Hawkins. Yeah, Hawkins, the Juco transfer. He's just starting to settle into Coach Hugh Jackson's offense. He has a good arm. He has a lot of speeches on the outside. Four touchdowns already on the season. This game can kill you on the ground and through the air. Difficult second. Walk that noise. Here we go. will receive. Sunny day at Daytona Beach. 82 degrees. Winds out of the east-northeast at 10 miles per hour. Should be a fun one this afternoon. From the five-yard line, it is returned up to the 11. So backfield position for Bethune Cookman on its first series. They come out. The turn came from Jimmy Antonio Robinson. His third return of the season. And yeah, they'll be led out by junior quarterback Jalen Jones on the season. 134 yards on the ground. Come on, Lockett. 19 of 43. Only Don't completing 44% of his passes. 370 yards, one touchdown, with three interceptions. Definitely going to clean up the turnovers this afternoon. The drive begins from the 11. minute substitution before the first play. Bethune Cookman. Starting quarterback, Jalen Jones. Looks like we have an offensive lineman that uh, kind of forgot his watch. <laughs> forgot the game started at uh, 1 p.m. Central. 2 o'clock on the East Coast. <laughs> That's Taj Bright opt back onto the line. They go to the left side for the first carry. A pickup of two. Short game on the play. Stop by number 91. Offense that averages 360 yards per game, 142 on the ground, 218 through the air. They want to have a balanced attack. Coach Terry Sims in his seventh season wants to make sure that his team can get in some second and third down in manageable situations. Quayshawn Burr got the first carry. Now it's second and eight for Jones. Back to the ground. It's a good burst up the left side. He's past the 30. Over midfield. Up the sideline to the 20. And goes down at the 4. A long run nearly to the house of Krishan Bird. Down inside the five-yard line. Great job by Bird. Watch the excellent job by the left side of that offensive line. And once Bird gets to the second level, he thinks he's gone to the house. But he got tracked down from behind. Excellent job by number 20 coming up from behind to make that tackle touchdown saving tackle. But it's going to be first and goal inside the red zone. Up the middle, they go back to Bird. It was an 82 yard oh, carry for carry. Bird. The only player to touch the ball so far. Three straight carries for Quayshawn Bird. And it was Chris Degree that made that touchdown saving tackle on the previous play. With the Bill Cookman in business early in this one. They had the bye week, perhaps a chance to establish the run and dominate in the trenches. So poor field position negated by the 82-yard run for Quayshawn Bird. His longest run of the season. 
Second in goal from the four. Just underway from Daytona. It's in motion, it's the sweep for Riley, he is in. And it's a touchdown. Perfect timing on the sweep. Marcus Riley coming around. Marcus Riley with the touchdown. With the touchdown. He had a big he game a couple of weeks ago against Miami. He had two big receptions. He was Pass shut out two weeks ago against South Carolina State. Coach Terry Sims says we want to get him involved early. He gets into the end zone on the sweep. They will go for two. Just a little fake just to see what Grambling might do. And now they'll go for the PAT. Dylan Mogadam for the point after. And good, a fast start, all on the ground, Kenmore, on the first series. It's an 88-yard drive that took less than two minutes. Yeah, you definitely want to come out and establish yourself, as you mentioned, Matt. Come Wildcat out the fans, week. come to your Wildcats on the biggest stage. They really couldn't get the offense on track. Football takes over TIA. Yeah, able to go down 88 yards on that first drive, get into the end zone, set the tone the at home in this State. opener. Let's, show up. Let's look at our impact show players here you today. Your Four. Today. Grambling, Lyndon Rash, he's their go-to receiver on the outside. Fastest kid on the team, so you know Hawkins is going to try to get him the ball in space. And for Bethune-Cookman, Kamari Everett, the big tight end, number one. Last year, 52 catches, 888 yards and 10 touchdowns. So far this season in two games, only two catches on the season. I think they're going to try to unleash the big kid here this afternoon. Cricket. Smile, you're on Cricket. Tonight's Impact Players presented by Cricket. A bright start for head coach Terry Sims and Bethune Cookman. Nikolai Daniels to kick it off. You know, questionable decision on the return from the kickoff. They start at the 12, but no problem. Don't need to go to the air at all for the touchdown drive. Here's a nice return up the right side, but tripped up at the 25 yard line. Number that is nine. where. A Grambling first series will begin. That was Marcus wow, Britton with the return. A junior from Baton Rouge, transfer from UIW out of the Southland. All right, Ken Moore, let's get to the keys to the game for Grambling. Yeah, let's look at Ken's keys to the game for the Grambling Tigers. And Coach... Hugh Jackson told us this week they oh, have to protect man. the Make football. The had a problem with turnovers in the non-conference schedule. They have to play for 60 minutes. So far this season, Grambling in the first half tied with their opponents and scores 58 to 58. But in the second half, the Tigers have been outscored 87 to 19. So they have to play for all 60 minutes in this afternoon. First carry goes to Dedrick Talbert, the junior from Baton Rouge. Just his third carry of the year. He picks up six, makes it second and four on Grambling's first series oh, no. and a player down. Yeah, Melvin Priestley, he's just coming back from injury, and they were very excited to have him back the left tackle, and it looks like he's injured on the first play of the ball game. Looks like it's his left ankle that they're tending to. Melvin Priestley. Freshman from East St. Louis, Illinois. There's a big kid, 6'4", 295 pounds. This is one of their outstanding young offensive linemen, and they were so looking forward to his return today. But it looks like he's a little bit shaken up. Bethune-Cookman leading 7-0. Priestley back to his feet in Daytona.
ESPN is presented by Pepsi Zero Sugar, official partner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. By Cricket, smile, you're on Cricket. And by Chevrolet, find new roads. Injury at second and four for Grambling on its first series from the 31 back to the ground. And a short gain. Dedrick Talbert again. He had the first carry. So all runs so far as two flags come in late, Ken. The touchdown play technically goes down as a four yard touchdown pass to Marcus Riley. But for all intents and purposes, Bethune Cookman ran the ball all the way down the field. Yeah, they did an excellent job on that opening drive, and now we got our first penalty. First one foul, face mask, defense, number 57, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Our referee today, Eric Blunson. Face mask gives Grambling a first down. We see Hugh Jackson. First and 10 from the 46. Another handoff. Short gain, good defensive line play. Inside handoff, no gain on the play. Wildcat fans make some noise. This is something that Gremlin wants to do. They want to establish the running game on the season, two, only two, averaging on the 103 yards per game on the ground, 155 through the air. Coach Hugh Jackson, he wants to use that running game to set up the pass. And yes, it is a hot day in Daytona Beach as the fans are out at Daytona Stadium. The face mask was on Reginald Pearson two plays ago. Deep drop, slinging it downfield. It is nearly intercepted. Could have been picked off by two in the secondary by Bethune Cookman. Poe had the closest chance. Yeah, it looks like that was Omari Hill Robinson coming up to make the play. Cornerback nearly had the pick, could not bring it in. It's Gerald Pugh, the junior from Hollywood, Florida, transfer from Cisco College in Texas. Third and 10. Two right, one left, two in the backfield with Hawkins. Hawkins has a clean pocket, time to step up. He goes back to the same spot. Nice catch, brought in just inside the 25 yard line. First down, Grambling. It's Cash Foley. Great job by Foley. 5'11", 190 pounds, but watch it climb the ladder here, using that vertical leap to go up and snag it out of the air. Big play for the Tigers as they move deep into Bethune-Cookman territory. First catch on the season for Foley. It was Devontre Hampton in coverage. Back to the ground. Inside handoff to number six, 14 on the play. Number 57 on the tackle for the Cats. C.J. Russell on the carry that time. The sophomore out of Arcadia picks up a short game. Both teams looking pretty crisp offensively to begin this ball game. Reginald Pearson, the senior out of Montgomery, Alabama with the tackle. Second and eight for Grambling, first series. Off to the right, lost his footing just a bit. On the Jaden Handy, he's a freshman from New Orleans, transfer from Ole Miss. Let's Two carries on the season bit. before today. He's a walk-on. Yeah, so Grambling doing a lot of rotation in the backfield. Getting a, they have a, a stable of backs, and they'll use them all equally. And Coach Hugh Jackson, he's going to see which one has the hot hand. That last carry, Handy kind of lost his balance. Third and five from the 17. Good fake. Flips it back. Missed a tackle up near a first down. Taken down by number 15. Taking up fourth down. For it's just short. Noah Bean, a grad student, transfer from UNLV with the catch. Jamie Jones warming up on the, uh, on the other sideline. Fourth and one now coming up for Grambling. Coach Hugh Jackson's going to keep the offense on the field. Trying to match score for score. Four yard pickup for Bean. They go to the ground on fourth down, and he looks like he has it. Up to the 11-yard line. Talbert picks up the first down for Grambling. Good job by Talbert running over the right side. 
Here Offensive line here. doing a nice job so far for Grambling. Played well last week against Jackson State for 30 minutes. Second half, things kind of fell apart for the Tigers. Cortarius Hawkins from the shotgun. Fakes the handoff, will take it himself. He turns the corner, he's at the five and up to the three. Good pickup, about two yards shy of the first down. First carry today for Porterius Hawkins. Good job, you saw the big lineman, Ashante Cole, pulling on that play. Another freshman on that offensive line, 6'4", 300 pounds, number 79, got the lead blocked that time. So they up second and short. They can get a first down before getting to the end zone. It's second and three from the four yard line. First down markers at the one. Handed off, he's in the end zone. Grambling responds, it's Dedrick Talbert. He got the ball the first play of the series. He ends the drive with the four yard touchdown run. Well, watch this power football, great block by the fullback and then Talbert just takes it over the left side, powers into the end zone. And Grambling Tigers Number one three, point away Urban. from tying this football Urban. game up. Garrett Urban, who doubles as the punter, is also on for the PAT. He's six for nine from the PATs on the season. That's up and good. A good start for both offenses. Bethune Cookman and Grambling tied at seven from Daytona. Let there be no doubt. You are ready for whatever comes next. You've got bars to raise, expectations to exceed, status quos to rise above, and you've come to the right place because it all starts right here, which is precisely why we are so proud to support HBCU programs. When was the last time you experienced something different? is uh, what's ahead of us. I don't get it. Yeah. Maybe this will help. So now we're in the present. And now we're in the future. The all-electric Chevy Bolt EUV with available Super Cruise for hands-free driving. Dad? Yeah? Do fish get thirsty? Uh. Find new answers. Find new roads. Chevrolet. Since 1837, historically black colleges and universities have been fulfilling their purpose to educate and empower. Since 2009, the Home Depot's Retool Your School Campus Improvement Grant Program has also been powered by a purpose to update, upgrade, and uplift HBCU campuses. Today, 44 million votes, $4.1 million, and 147 grants later, we remain inspired by the people, the passion, and the power of HBCUs to continue our purpose. Learn more at retoolyourschools.com. Welcome back to Daytona Stadium in Florida. Matt Peterson with the former Texas running back, Ken Moore, 7-7 between Grambling and Bethune-Cookman. Nice response there from the Tigers. 11 plays, 75 yards. 11 plays, 75 yard drive, took 428 off the clock. They respond to Bethune-Cookman's opening drive of four plays, 89 yards. We talked in the open about this being an evenly matched ball game, playing out on the field so far here in the first period. Face mask from Reginald Pearson, a critical play to help Grambling's offense. The kick will be returned from the three. There's a pinch up the left side. He's past the 30, only the kicker to beat, and he has beaten him. The 30, the 20, the 10. After the pinch, he takes it all the way. Kickoff return for a touchdown for Bethune Cookman. Darnell Dees, 98-yard touchdown run. Matt, see, 
they fake it on the opening kick. This time, they do the pitch return, and there's only one man to beat, and the kicker, you feel sorry for him. He's just not gonna get it as he takes it to the house. Big plays all over Daytona this afternoon. What a response from Bethune Cookman. An 82 yard run on the first series and then a 98 yard kickoff return for a touchdown from the sophomore Darnell Dees. Dylan Magadam on for the point after touchdown. And it's up. Good. We'll get, we had a good conversation this week with the coaching staff, Terry Sims, plus the uh, special teams coach. And he said, we've come close to bro breaking a few this season. They finally break one here as they return home. Ken, let's get your keys to the game for Bethune-Cookman this afternoon. Well, for Bethune-Cookman, they have to do more of what they just did. They're gonna to have to have some big plays. They're also gonna to have to protect the football. Protect the football, protect the rock. Make sure you're not turning the football over. Start fast, which they've done. Now they have to finish strong and they wanna play their style of defense. They wanna force these Grambling running backs to run east and west, keep them from going north and south. Grambling had good success on the first drive. We'll see if the Bethune Cookman defense can tighten up on this second drive. Ken's key to the game presented by Chevrolet. Find new roads. We talked to special teams coordinator Kenyatta McCoy for Bethune Cookman this week. He said that his team wanted to be more aggressive on special teams. They also took some of their starters, put them on special teams as well because he wanted to shore up the coverage team and the return game. This kick is bouncing in return up to the 31 yard line. Both teams very aggressive on returns. That was Marcus Britton with his second return today. You know, Ken, it's not that common to return a kick from inside the five. They did that. And that was after the first kickoff to start the game where they were at bad field position at the 12. So really putting the first return behind them, they take the second one to the house. Yeah, and a lot of times you feel like if you have an advantage in special teams, instead of taking the ball at the 25, if you feel like you have a good return unit, you're going to go ahead and take a chance and try to get an explosive play and put your team in excellent field position. From the 30, first and 10. Out to the right, quick tackle, but he breaks two tackles. He has a first down. He's over midfield. One man to beat. And he'll run out of room at the eight yard line. It seemed like a short game, but the tackles were missed by Bethune Cookman and a long catch and run for Grambling. Number one on the top of the pass, Amari Hill Robinson. An incredible run down that far sideline and missed tackles for Bethune Cookman. As you mentioned, Matt, that should have been a short game. Instead, the Grambling Tigers are right back knocking at the door inside the 10. Talk about a tennis match just going back and forth. First and goal from the nine yard line for Grambling. It is handed off. He's wrapped up, no game. Jaden Handy once again. That was C.J. Russell on that big catch and run. Stop by number 48, Andy Wallace III. Let's go defense, defense, defense. Another handoff. A fake, he kept it that time. Hawkins loses about three yards. Great job on the Wildcat defense. They were not surprised on that zone read. Coming in to make the tackle was Powell. Powell had a couple of big plays last week as well, a couple of weeks ago as well. So good job coming up to make the stop. Third and goal now from the 13-yard line. Terrius Hopkins, the quarterback, has three receivers to his left. And a flag comes in, maybe movement up front. There's a flag on the play. Ball start on Grambling. I guess we got to bag that thing. 
Tigers have struggled in the red zone so far this season as well. One thing that Coach E. Jackson talked about. Only been into the red zone three times this season. Third and goal from the 13. It's handed off. He breaks a tackle. He's back to the five. So that sets up an interesting situation. Do you try for three or do you go for it? Fourth and goal from about the sixth. Nice carry from Jaden Handy. Yeah, nice job by Handy. We'll see what Coach Jackson decides to do. I think he's going to take the points here. Garrett Urban comes on. He's from Houston, Texas, Fort Bend Travis High School. 6 for 9 on the year. Short kick. This one's from about 24 yards away. Kick is up. And good. Urban makes his seventh field goal of the season. Grambling gets three points midway through the first quarter in Daytona. Bethune-Cookman leads Grambling Back to Welcome back to Swack Football, presented by Pepsi Zero Sugar. Matt Peterson with Ken Moore. Good atmosphere at Daytona Stadium. Bethune-Cookman hosting Grambling State. It's their only home game until November 5th against Alabama State. This has been a track meet already, Ken. Some big <laughs> plays here in the first quarter. Well, for Grambling, already 128 yards of total offense. For Bethune-Cookman, 89 yards on, the, on offense as well. So... The Wildcats will have an opportunity here, and this one's going to go through the end zone. And um, as we mentioned, great electric atmosphere in Daytona Beach this afternoon. 82 degrees, sunny skies, and you couldn't ask for a much better Saturday afternoon of football. And both of these teams are putting on an offensive display so far here in the first period. After the 97-yard kickoff return for a touchdown, it's a touchback. The Touchdown was Jimmy Robinson the third, pitching it back to Darnell Dees, who took it all the way. Now, Bethune Cookman hasn't had the ball much. They had an 81 yard carry on the first series from Quayshawn Bird, setting up a touchdown for four yards from Marcus Riley. And then they had the kickoff return for a touchdown. This team has one first down today, but they lead 14 10. <laughs> 
Grambling, three down linemen now. They'll mix up their defense occasionally, and now we got a little movement in the backfield from Bethune Cookman. Looked like a couple of guys in motion at the same time. You see, number one, that's the big tight end. Amari Avery, 6'6, 250, transfer from Louisville. And uh, we expect a big game out of him today. Only two catches on the season. He was the leading receiver last year with 52. Quayshawn Bird is in the backfield behind Jalen Jones. First and 15 after the penalty. Jones will throw. He steps up. Jones fumbles, and he dives on it. Bethune Cookman keeps possession after a short game. Jones, his first keeper today. And had it stripped. Yeah, he had 117 yards two weeks ago against South Carolina State. And you'll see this from Jones a lot. He doesn't survey the field for long before he'll use those legs and try to get downfield. Great job by the Tiger defense stripping it away, almost coming up with the turnover. Second and 10. Jones from the shotgun again. Elaborate play design. Off to the left, good blocking out front. That's a good tackle. It was Dylan Lee. He swept around Jones and curled out to the left for a little screen pass. Yeah, yeah. Lee goes in motion just no to see what play. type of defense Grambling was in. No one was with him, so they know they were in zone defense. So he comes back to the from left to right. Good pursuit by the Tiger defense to hold it to a it's short game. Ten. Now Bethune Cookman in a third and long situation where they do not want to be. Wildcats on the season, only converting 29% on third down. 39 for Bethune Cookman. Some pressure, he slings it and it's incomplete. Good coverage, they brought some pressure. And a flag comes in, maybe a late hit on Jones. We'll see what this flag is for. Flag on the play. Looks like flags in the secondary, maybe in a defensive holding or pass interference possibly. Official today, Gary Brunston. And with that penalty, it's the first down. Six, the senior out of East St. Louis, so that's going to give the Wildcats a new set of downs and a, a free first down. Would have been a time for a punt. Instead, a new first down for Bethune-Cookman. First and 10 from the 36. Movement up front. Yeah, the team's getting a little sloppy now. Everything was rolling smoothly for the first three possessions. And now, the team's going to make a few mistakes. Yeah, that's one thing Coach Hugh Jackson is not going to be happy with as well because the Rambling Tigers so far this season in three games have 300 yards in penalties. Uh, simple math, that's 100 yards per game. That is not going to get it done. So Coach Hugh Jackson stressed that. Kickoff return for a touchdown. This team has one first down today, but they lead 14-10. <laughs> Grambling three down linemen now. They'll mix up their defense occasionally, and now we got a little movement in the backfield from Bethune Cookman. Looked like a couple of guys in motion Black at the same the time. You see, number one, that's the big tight end. Amari Averick, 6'6, 250, transfer from Louisville. And uh, we expect a big game out of him today. Only two catches on the season. He was the Louisville. leading receiver last year with 52. Quayshawn Bird is in the backfield behind Jalen Jones. First and 15 after the penalty. Jones will throw. He steps up. Jones fumbles, and he dives on it. Bethune Cookman keeps possession after a short game. Jones, his first keeper today. And 
had it stripped. Yeah, he had 117 yards two weeks ago against South Carolina State. And you'll see this from Jones a lot. He doesn't survey the field for long before he'll use those legs and try to get downfield. Great job by the Tiger defense stripping it away, almost coming up with the turnover. Second and 10. Jones from the shotgun again. Elaborate play design. Off to the left. Good blocking out front. That's a good tackle. It was Dylan Lee. He swept around Jones and curled out to the left for a little screen pass. Yeah, Lee goes in motion just to see what type of defense Grambling was in. No one was with him, so they know they were in zone defense. So he comes back to the from left to right. Good pursuit by the Tiger defense to hold him to a short game. Now Bethune Cookman in a third and long situation where they do not want to be. Wildcats on the season only converting 29% on third down. Third and nine for Bethune Cookman. Some pressure. He slings it and it's incomplete. Good coverage. They brought some pressure. And a flag comes in, maybe a late hit on Jones. We'll see what this flag is for. Flag on the play. Looks like flags in the secondary, maybe in a defensive holding or pass interference possibly. Official today, Eric Brunston. <laughs> That's going to give the Wildcats a new set of downs and a, a free first down. Would have been a time for a punt. Instead, a new first down for Bethune Cookman. First and 10 from the 36. Movement up front. Uh, team's getting a little sloppy now. Everything was. Rolling smoothly for the first three possessions. And now, he's going to make a few mistakes. Yeah, that's one thing Coach Hugh Jackson is not going to be happy with as well. Because the Bradley Tigers so far this season in three games have 300 yards in penalties. Uh, simple man, that's 100 yards per game. That is not going to get it done. So Coach B. Jackson stressed that this week to his team. They have to be more disciplined. They're going to have to do better on the defensive side of the ball. From the shotgun. Ended off right side. Nice carry. Very tough. Great right burn with the carry. It's Burr and another one. Again. Wow, an 81 yard run at the first down. series. He has a first down from the Duke Cooper here. A 5'8, 170 pound senior out of Palm Coast, Florida. And he's doing a nice job here in this first half. Using his strength to see the two big offensive linemen. Get behind those big guys, just hide, and then find a little crease, hit it hard, pick up as much as you can, fall forward. Nice gain on first down. Now at midfield, new set of downs, first and 10 for Bethune Cookman and the quarterback Jalen Jones. Jimmy Robinson is off his left hip. It's a fake to Robinson. Thrown off to the left, he'll cut inside. Breaks two tackles. He's near a first down, pick up a nine or so, and a nice catch and run from Dylan Lee. And again, you see both eight the defenses eight. having a tough time tackling, Lee. getting these receivers and running backs to the ground. But for both eight of these ball clubs, the skill position guys, the receivers, the running backs, very difficult to get down. They all have a lot of speed and very slippery, as you can see. Wildcat fans make some noise. This is on the offense. Come on, let's go. Jones, the quarterback, two off to his right. Fakes it, flips it, first down. 
and that's how you get the ball in his hands. Kamari Everett, as and you mentioned, with two catches on the Another season. You go to him at the short run situation, second and two. And we asked Coach Terry Sims, has there been any frustration from Avery so far this Kamari season? Everett. He says no, he's understanding that he's being double teamed. He's the focus of other teams' defenses. He just has to let the game come to him. First and 10 from the 36 for Bethune Cookman. Everett's put in motion. They go out to him again. Second time in a row, he has the ball. He has blockers in front. Everett has a first down. A flag came in late. Pick up of about 15 for Kamari Everett. May have a block in the back on that far sideline. It's going to wipe out a nice play by the Wildcats. play. Powell, the outside receiver. When you have those hands out like that, you cannot grab the top of the jersey. The officials are going to see that every time. You want to have your hands inside the shoulder pads, not outside the shoulder pads. Easy call for the official. Backs up Bethune-Cookman. Sometimes you have to teach guys how to hold. Yes. <laughs> it's a lost start. From the 37, it's handed off. Nice pickup. He has a seam on this right side. Lowers the shoulder. Hard run and for Jimmy Robinson, who has a first down. Again, another nice job on the right side of the offensive line. They're winning the battle at the line of scrimmage right now against this Grambling Tiger defense. Up tempo from Bethune Cookman. First and 10 from the 20. Two right, two left. Robinson stays in the backfield behind Jones. Hands it off back to Jones. Jones makes one man miss oh. around the umpire and he's up inside the 10. Back to back hard runs from Jimmy Robinson. Yeah, Robinson made a mistake that time though. He cut back inside. He should have stayed to the outside. Watch, he's gonna have a big inside running lane. Just stay left, stay left. Well, nope, he cuts back into the referee into a whole bunch of Grambling Tigers. Made the wrong cut that time. He keeps it to the outside. He's probably into the end zone. First and goal from the eight. Jones has been leading his team down the field mostly with the run game. Robinson stays in off his left hip. Averett in motion. Back to Jones. Jones stopped for maybe one yard. Good job that time by the Tiger defense closing the gap. But as long as Grambling continues to give that defensive look with four down linemen and you have everyone else five to seven yards off the football, Bethune Cookman is going to continue to pound it inside. Now, it gets a little bit tighter as you get inside the red zone, but the Grambling Tiger defense playing pretty soft, really only about six in the box right now, really five in the box right now. So I would expect them to try to run it again. Good fake. Now he moves back to his left. It's Jones throwing back. And good decision, throws it away. Brings up third down. It's like he had a receiver open. If he puts that ball down and to the outside where only the receiver can make an attempt on it, that was Daryl Powell in the inside, in the end zone, excuse me. But Jones did not want to take a chance in the red zone. No problem wow, playing it safe. Still got one more play for third down, and if not, you bring on the field goal unit. Third and goal from the seven for Bethune-Cookman. Jones has Robinson behind him. Jones moving to his right. He's going to go to the end zone, but he's stopped well short. Nice tackle around the six-yard line. We'll set up fourth down. For the gain of one. The 
Tillman and Gray coming up to make that stop. That's the end of the first quarter. Field goal try or a fourth down try coming up. It's been big plays led by Quay Sean Bird. 97 yard kickoff return for a touchdown. After one in Daytona, Bethune Cook. We made USAA Renters Insurance for the stuff you love. Because if it's worth lugging up five floors, it's worth protecting for as low as 33 cents a day. It's that simple. USAA, what you're made of, we're made for. Visa is a network that makes online shopping so quick and easy. You might have time to get into this, that, and this, and discover your destiny. Wherever your passion takes you, pay easily with Visa. Keenan. Hey, Keenan. Looking good. Feeling good. I just found all these cars on Auto Trader. Wow. I wait for the best part there, microwave. A dealer is going to deliver this car to our home. Never leave home. Never leave home. Oh, it's here. There is one thing I can't do from home. Drive. Someone stop him. Keenan. There was only when I pushed myself to the highest summit that I found my best search. <laughs> Stop it. Summits can happen anywhere. Your summit doesn't have to include a mountain. It's your own barriers to break through, your new steps to take. You can summit on ropes, on wheels, on trails, even with fails. Summits come in all shapes and sizes. The most important thing is that you find yours. Is he? September 30th, only on Disney+. Plus. It took a while to get up here. We started out around 1959. Then we took a hard left in East Africa. A right at Baja. A 180 in the empty quarter. And that 65 degree incline at Hell's Revenge. But we didn't do all that just to get here. We did it to give you a truck that'll take you anywhere. This is the new Nissan. Welcome back to Daytona Stadium. Bethune Cookman setting up for a field goal try on fourth down here to open the second quarter. Dylan Mongadam will try it. It is up and good. Field goal for Dylan Mongadam. He entered the today three for four on his field goal tries. Good job by the holder, Ethan Dottilio, as that ball kind of squibbed back there. Good job getting it down and allowing the field goal attempt to go through. So 17-10 ball game. A lot of scoring here in the first 15 minutes of this one. Jalen Jones for Grambling, 5 of 7, 28 yards and a touchdown. And for Grambling, Hawkins, 3 of 4 so far, 97 yards. So both offenses looking very sharp to begin this one. 17-10. Grambling's carried the ball 10 times. Bethune-Cookman nine times. Bethune-Cookman has 129 rushing yards. Thanks in large part to Quayshawn Bird's 81-yard run, which set them up inside the five-yard line for a four-yard touchdown catch from Marcus Riley on a bit of a sweep. A little shovel pass. Nikolai Daniels going to kick it away. He handles kickoffs. Freshman from Dekula, Georgia. 
And you see the passing yards. So 28 passing yards for Bethune Cookman, but they lead by a touchdown. It will bounce into the end zone and it will be brought out. Wow. Here comes Grambling, and it's a bad decision. Only back to the 12-yard line as Britton tried to go for the spectacular. Yeah, it may have been a mistake that time by Britton, and he's going to hobble off. Looks like he's got a little problem on that left leg, so he's going to get some assistance from one of his teammates off the field. But Grambling going to start deep in their own territory now, trailing about seven. And bounce in the end zone. He had his back to the field when he made the decision to try to bring it out. Well, both of these coaches said they wanted to be aggressive on special teams, and they, they're living up to the billing here today. <laughs> they're throwing caution to the wind. They're going to return everything they possibly can. Now, this highlight of this game was a 97-yard kickoff return for a touchdown from Darnell Dees. Jimmy Robinson, the third, had it, pitched it back. Dees brought it all the way back. So two big plays, the story today for Bethune Cookman, the 97-yard kickoff return from Dees and the 81-yard run from Krayshawn Bird on the first series. You see number zero in the ball game now at that left linebacker position. That's Rashendo Lewis, 6'2", 240-pound linebacker out of Bethune Cookman, trying to make the tackle there, and he could. Good. Stiff arm to break the tackle. Dedrick Talbert has been the featured back. He had a four-yard touchdown Good run down, on the first series for Grambling that tied the game at seven. Talbert's a transfer from Garden City Community College in Kansas. Also played at Southern. Started his career at Grambling three years ago. They go back to Talbert. He has a nice hole up the middle. And an open field tackle may have saved a much larger game. Another grabbing seat, first half. Watch the blocking left side of that offensive line. A couple of guys pulling. Start running back cuts back D inside, D right D off the hip. D nice D hole inside. He's up the first guy. D back D to the ground with Talbert. Talbert's got a hole on the left side. He has a first down, and he's over midfield. Wrestled down at the 46. Dedrick Talbert, the horse here to start the second quarter for Grambling. Right behind Ashante Cole, 79. Push out block. That has a big hole from Tolbert off that left side. And again, he's just dragging Talbert for another five yards before finally being pulled out from behind by Hamilton. Devontre Hampton with the tackle. Defense. First down, Grambling at the 46. Terrius Hopkins under center. Two behind him. Hands it off. Nice bounce out to the left, but wrestled down after a short gain. It's Chance Williams, the freshman from Baton Rouge. We have not said Williams is going to back carry. Ken Moore, he had been one of the featured backs. 22 carries for 70 yards this season. It's been a lot of talent and handy. No penalty. Put the penalty flag back in the pocket. And of course, we have not seen the leading ground game for Grambling today, Maurice Washington. So it's been a stable to replace him. It's thrown and caught. Just yeah, inside the 25-yard line. Nice catch from Lyndon Rash, who's in the Lyndon leading Rash. receiver so far. Seven catches for 195 yards and two touchdowns before today. Yeah, Rash is their go-to guy. He's the fastest kid Grambling on the field for Grambling. A senior, six-foot, 200 on, pounds. Defense. He's the go-to guy Defense. for Hawkins. Defense. Coverage from Devontre Hampton. Defense. Another first down, now from the 23. Hawkins under center, hands it off. C.J. Russell. Russell on a carry. carry. Stop by a gang of wildcats. Some big plays. And Dedrick Talbert had carries for 12, 11, and 25 yards on this drive. Remember, it started back around the 12-yard line. Yeah. So three long runs and that long pass to Lyndon Rash. 
And now just outside the red zone. Neither team has had problems moving the football. Let's go wild that fan. Defense. Cash Defense. Foley put in motion. He's in the Defense. slot on the left side of your screen. Defense. Hawkins from the shotgun on second and nine. Steps up. It is caught near a first down. Again, Lyndon Rash, his second catch on this drive. First down, Grambling. Number 10 with the reception, Rash. And again, just a little nice route on the outside by Rash. You have to respect his Giving speed. First and goal so that means the cornerback is going to give you some cushion. You just have to curl in front. Nice, strong throw by Hawkins right on target. Let's first go and goal. Three Defense. receivers to the left. Talbert in the backfield with Hawkins. High snap. Hawkins throws, touchdown! Phase on Wilson. With his second catch of the season. The freshman from Texas, alone in the back part of the end zone. Just a post route. Watch at the top of the screen, he comes free. Defensive back loses his man. That was number five. That was Jackson that lost the receiver on the post route. And that was an easy throw and catch. You won't have a much easier touchdown pass this season if you're Hawkins. Garrett Urban on for the point after touchdown. It's up and good. A track meet from Daytona. Just minutes into the second half. It's 17-17 between Grambling and Bethune-Cookman. Chevrolet. a new day of Bethune-Cookman University's changing landscape of bold leadership in business, education, research, and STEM, creating innovative ways for new Wildcats to change the world. Get ready. The tide is rising. It's time for you to catch the next wave in higher education at Bethune-Cookman University. Building champions for life didn't just happen overnight. Since 1920, the Southwestern Athletic Conference, SWAC, has been in the forefront in leadership and excellence in all our athletic programs. There are very few major sports halls of fame that a SWAC athlete is not a member. Hall of Fame coaches who were stewards and mentors to these elite athletes. Our tradition, our distinction, our legacy. We are the SWAC, building champions for life. Daytona Stadium in Florida. Matt Peterson with Ken Moore. It's 17-17. Faison Wilson alone in the back of the end zone for the tying touchdown. Been very entertaining. Both teams using the run game as we see the last scoring drive. Eight plays, 94 yards. Yeah, great job by Grambling. And we have our own version of the Daytona 500 out here tonight on the football field as both of these teams are just going up and down the football field like they're going around the racetrack. Urban with the kickoff. It bounces in front of the 10. They try another lateral, and it's brought back over the 30-yard line. Another big return from Bethune-Cookman up to the 40-yard line. Good. But did he fumble? Grambling pointing in their direction. And it's going to be Grambling football after the fumble. They're still trying to unpile here. Grambling says they have it. I was wondering if he was down already. It's a mad scramble. Tigers come out with the football. Now the discussion will be if the Wildcat returner was down. Mm -hmm. 
Eric Blunston's our referee talking things over with his officials. The call will be a hold against Bethune-Cookman. Penalties decline. It's Grambling football. Our first turnover today comes four minutes into the second period. Now this, we wonder if this one will go to review. Here we go. As again, they do the little pitch back on the return. And bringing it up was deals. And you see him carrying the football loosely. Great job with the strip. That was Estes that ripped it out of there. And the Tigers come up with it. No need to review. Tigers first and 10 at the 40. Ray Estes. With the strip, as you mentioned. Grambling takes over, can take the lead for the first time today. Their series begins at the 40, but a flag comes in after the false start. Ken, very interesting. Faison Wilson with just his second catch of the year. He's a three-star prospect out of Lancaster, Texas, in Lancaster High School. Some big schools offered him. Alabama, Arkansas, Auburn, Colorado, Florida, Illinois, Kansas, Missouri, <laughs> Ole Miss, SMU, Texas, your alma mater, Texas A&M, and Texas Tech, and he chose Grambling. He has his first collegiate touchdown just a moment ago. Well, that's why you bring in a coach like Hugh Jackson, just like primetime Deion Sanders at Jackson State. You want to try to get a lot of these kids to come to the HBCUs and – a lot of these big-time recruits now are uh, making the decision. You have NIL opportunities now that kind of levels the playing field somewhat, and, and some of these kids want to embrace that tradition of playing at an HBCU. And when Grambling calls, you know, you're going to listen. And when Hugh Jackson calls, a former NFL head coach, if that's where your goal is to get to the next level, uh, you, you're going to listen, and some of those kids are going to make that decision. Long throw, a good throw, caught at the 30, a first down for Grambling. He took a shot, but earned the first down. It's Coleman with his second catch of the year, the sophomore from Baton Rouge. And I got to tell you what, man, this is the best I've seen Quaterius Hawkins look this year. He looks calm in the pocket. The offensive line is doing an outstanding job of giving him a nice, clean pocket, but he's making some nice throws here this afternoon. To the first down catch, he'll throw again. Open man in the middle of the field. It's Coleman again. Back-to-back -back catches. This one for about eight and a half. And the last throw, Ken Moore, was into a tight window with three Bethune-Cookman defenders nearby. Absolutely. And then this last play, he went to his third read, looked downfield, saw no one open, came back to his check down receiver, Coleman, for a nice catch in the flat. It looks like we have a shaken up wildcat on the field. Injured player for Bethune Cookman. Tied at 17 in Daytona. Thanks for having us. Oh, and here's the money I owe you. <laughs> So whenever we need to get paid back, we always ask for Zelle. The money goes straight into my bank account. Put it in your pocket. I prefer it in my bank account. Okay. Dessert? Yeah. Zelle. Look for it in your banking app. I've never run in ultras before. I like them. They feel cushiony. They feel stable. I'm loving the super bright colors. It's fun, flashy. You have more room for control. They're also secure around my very narrow feet, which is something that I struggle with. I was resigned to give up on running, but oh, great, in these ultras. This one sold me. The cushion was excellent to handle that terrain out there. I'm pretty much sold. <laughs> Hashtag, what was I doing before? Honestly, ultra's my new shoe, and I've clearly been missing out. <laughs> Welcome to Allstate, where you can bundle and save. Isn't that right, Phil? Ha! What in the world are you doing? I'm in the metaverse, bundling my home and auto insurance. Save up to 25% when you bundle home and auto with Allstate. It took a while to get up here. 
We started out around 1959. Then we took a hard left in East Africa. A right at Baja. A 180 in the empty quarter. And that 65 degree incline at Hell's Revenge. But we didn't do all that just to get here. We did it to give you a truck that'll take you anywhere. This is the new Nissan. After the injury, Grambling on the move, second down and short. Good play fake, he's going to the end zone and it bounces in and out of the hands. Late flag comes in, it's the helmet comes off. Lyndon Rash nearly had a touchdown catch. We'll see what the flag is for. Prior to that play, Materius Hawkins had completed eight consecutive passes, 167 yards. And now we'll check the penalty marker. The Just elbow of uh, Lyndon Rush Rash came off. It's the side judge. Tony Smith discussing things. Now we'll hear from Eric Blunson. Yeah, he did. No, that's the way up. Come on, man. Turn this up, man. Oh. Being called targeting against Bethune Cookman, so now we'll have the replay official Mike Davis take a look at it, and we'll see what we can find out. It was second and short. Let's take a look at it here. So again, great time in the pocket. You'll see the hit there. Hey, 10 got to go out because the helmet came off. Looks like it, it's tough to see okay. there. Looks like he hit him in the shoulder, maybe got under the chin strap a little bit. I did not see the helmet dip as crown of the helmet. So this may get overturned based on that look. Can Treshawn Smith... Grad student, transfer from Louisiana. He's the one that applies the hit. Yeah, he did not use the crown of the helmet. Now, the helmet of Rash does come off from impact. Tough call there. Now, you also have the possibility of a personal foul for hitting a defenseless receiver as well. So they could remove the targeting and still call the personal foul. So you have a lot of things in play here. I'll go out on a limb count. I don't think the targeting's gonna stand. What do you think? I would take off the target. Yeah. A personal foul is a possibility because he did put a big hit on a defensive receiver. So he may have the penalty and remove the target. I agree. Eric Blunson communicating with replay official Mike Davis at the booth. But this has been a this has been a very exciting ball game. We talked about in the open, two evenly matched teams, two teams that it, you know kind of tried to find their footing in the non-conference schedule. With Duke Cookman coming off a of bye week and a chance to get some guys healthy, Grambling looked good for 30 minutes last week against Jackson State before they ran out of gas. So both teams felt very confident coming into this one. Both have been very aggressive on special teams as both special team coordinators told us that they would be. So this game is playing out how we thought it would. Long review here. 167 passing yards for Grambler, only 28 for Bethune Cookman, but Bethune Cookman has 130 rushing yards and a 97 yard touchdown return from a kickoff from Darnell Dees. Wildcats dominated this game last year, 31-14, down in Grambling. Long 
discussion here. was the call on the field. They have to have enough visual evidence to reverse it. plays from Hugh Jackson. The snap thrown off to the right. 2v2 out there. Arena football feel on that play. Short gain on the play. Short gain. But tough for Trayshawn Smith. I think this is really tough for these defensive players. That, you know, five or ten years ago is a clean hit. Right. And now he's out of the game for the rest of the day. Yeah, it, it was a bang-bang play. It, it was tough. Again, the call on the field stands or, or confirmed, as they said. I, I, I thought that maybe he would escape with just a personal foul, but uh, Treshawn will be gone for the remainder of the afternoon, and now we have another penalty marker down. Another flag on the play. First and down, first and ten for the seven. And so we're, we're kind of going on a caution now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we, were, we, we were flying around the track here for a while. Now, now we're kind of under the caution, right, the caution flag now. Right, right, right. Back scrambling up five yards. Come on, Wildcat fans. What other game going on this week? This afternoon, defense. Mississippi Valley visiting Jackson defense. State. Mississippi Valley's hanging defense. around down 14 7 with the ball in Jackson State territory late in the second quarter. Hawkins throw into the end zone, uh -oh. intercepted. A mistake from Hawkins. He telegraphed it. The intended receiver was Coleman. But it's picked off in a huge play for the defense. It's Amari Hill Robinson. Yeah, now this was the first bad decision by Hawkins this afternoon. As you see, stared down the receiver. Easy interception. And that's the third INT of the year for Hawkins. Great play by Amari Hill Robinson coming up with the turnover. And Bethune Cookman. Keeps it a 17-17 tie. First INT on the year for Amari Hill Robinson. First team all swack last year. He had four interceptions and 36 tackles last year, the junior from Fort Lauderdale. Now the mistake he made was bringing it out of the end zone, so the offense will now start at their own four-yard line. Tough field pit position. For the Wildcats of Bethune Cuffman, it's Jalen Jones, the quarterback. Handing off, off the left side. Able to turn the corner, pick up two or three. It's Quayshawn Bird, who is the primary ball carrier, picked up the first three carries of the game, but is deferred to Jimmy Robinson on the last series. Now it's back to Bird on first down. Yeah, warm afternoon, so you got to... You got to keep those guys rotated in and out. You want to have fresh backs in the backfield. And, and both teams have a good stable of skill position players on the outside at receiver and in the backfield. So we've seen Grambling have four different running backs in the ball game so far on their side offensively as well. Here's Jones on the shotgun. Fakes the handoff from his own goal line, heaving it downfield. Incomplete. No flag. It was... Marcus Riley, who had the touchdown in the game's opening minutes, looking for the flag. Marcus Riley, double coverage over there on the uh, near the Grambling sideline. 
So now it's going to be third down and long for Bethune Cookman. Both teams were marching down the field, but both teams have turned it over. Bethune Cookman on a kickoff return at the 40 yard line. It was fumbled. And then just a few plays ago, Retarius Hawkins picked off at the one yard line by Omari Hill Robinson. Here's Jones, hands it off. Pushed back into the end zone. Can he escape? He is brought down. Now, will they give him forward progress? No, they're gonna call the safety. If he would have just went down, they would have given him forward progress likely at around the one or two yard line. But after being hit, he continued to run into the end zone and turned it into a safety. Watch, he got hit there at the two, but he continues to run. If he would have just failed at that point, which you're not thinking of as a running back, you're going to try to escape, but continuing to run, and he gets caught for the safety. Julian Calvez with the safety, his third tackle of the season. 19-17 Grambling after the safety. Let there be no doubt. You are ready for whatever comes next. You've got bars to raise, expectations to exceed, status quos to rise above, and you've come to the right place because it all starts right here, which is precisely why we are so proud to support HBCU programs. Some college players give it their all. But when I say player, I don't mean the ones with the ball. I mean the ones that play drums, the brass, the woodwinds. These players bring excitement to the stadium because for them, halftime isn't a break. It's game time. Pepsi is a proud supporter of HBCU students. Pepsi and HBCUs, that's what I like. With Academy Sports and Outdoors, you can take outdoor fun to a whole new level with just the touch of a button because there's so much to discover on the Academy app. Create your dream outdoor living space that gets the whole family out there spending time together. Master new recipes with just the right amount of heat and the perfect spice or seasoning. And give the kids even more ways to play. Great times are waiting. Download the Academy Sports and Outdoors app today. Dad, when is the future? Uh, oh wow, um, the future is, uh, what's ahead of us? I don't get it. Yeah, maybe this will help. So now, we're in the present. And now, we're in the future. The all-electric Chevy Bolt EUV with available Super Cruise for hands-free driving. Dad? Yeah? Do fish get thirsty? Uh. Find new answers, find new roads. Chevrolet. Daytona Stadium, 1917 Grambling. The safety giving Grambling its first lead of the day. That's Joshua Reed. He's one of the best linebackers on this Grambling team. 18 tackles, two tackles for loss, one fumble recovery. He brought it back 55 yards for a touchdown against Northwestern State a couple games ago. And he made the play against Quayshawn Bird, who maybe tried to get a little too aggressive. Instead of going down, tried to bounce it outside and got pushed back into the end zone. Yeah, just a, a mistake by the young running back. Being a little too aggressive, but a great play by the Grambling defense, and all of a sudden the Tigers have the lead. After the safety, it's the free kick brought out to the 37-yard line. Good field position for Grambling. And a late Another flag line comes line. in after the return from Joseph. Yeah, these teams have to keep their composure. Amari Jones with a stop. had a lot of penalties against South Carolina State a couple of weeks ago. And Coach Terry Sims says they have to get that cleaned up. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number one, the kicker. The receiver, the receiver, the receiver. 
like that personal foul is going to be against Lambert. Coach Hugh Jackson, his first season. And see, they got the fans and the mist blowing in Daytona. Warm afternoon. And keep Make these kids hydrated. There's Hugh Jackson, an assistant coach under Eddie George of Tennessee State last season. Again, from the 22 yard line, Rotarius Hawkins. Incomplete. Hawkins last week was intercepted at the one yard line. And Murray Hill Robinson, but they get the ball back after the safety. Come on, Wildcat fans, let's make some noise. Defense. Hawkins has been excellent. Nine throws, or uh, nine completions on 11 throws, one interception for 169 yards and a touchdown. Hand it off. Talbert picks up two. Number 17 for the captain. Stop filling the lane that time. Amari Jones Jr., 6'2, 225 pound linebacker out of Ruskin, Florida. Coming up Roll to make this time on Talbot. Defense. Defense. Bring it up third down. Play coming up now. Third down and long coming up for the Grambling Tigers. Third and about eight. See if, see if a throw Cookman dials up some pressure. Hawkins has a clean pocket. Throws it to the left. Brought in. First down, nice play design there. Very good composure under some pressure there. And it's the tight end, Noah Beam, with the first down pickup. Great job by Beam, picking up the first down. We have a marker down again. Let's see. Coach Terry Sims in his seventh oh, season. There was another pick up the flag down. They got a back that thing. That's the putting it away. We'll move it back further, negating the catch from Noah Bean, the transfer from UNLV. So no call there for our official to let us know what happened. So it looks like he's going to make the door at about 18 red. now, back at the 15. Defense. Here's Hawkins. Flips it out. Attempting the screen. Good pressure there from the Wildcats. It was C.J. Russell, the intended receiver. A couple penalties by Grambling. Put them in reverse. And that'll allow Bethune Cookman with an opportunity. Seven and a half minutes to go here in the second quarter. Wildcats trailing at home, 19-17. They had a 17-10 lead. Family responded with a touchdown and then a safety. It's Garrett Urban. Good pressure there. Jimmy Isles, the Australian punter, out to the 40-yard line. Cooper going to start off with great field position now on the Grambling side of the 50. Best field position of the day for Bethune right Cookman after the penalties really push Grambling back. AKA. Oh, she bailed out on that one. First and 10 from the 40, halfway through the second quarter. He keeps it, picks up about one. Jalen Jones, 19 carries on the season. Before today, last week, 
12 carries for 87 yards. A loss against South Carolina State. Looks like that was Lane Lewis coming up to make the stop from his defensive tackle position. Second down and long after the short game. Jalen Jones. Steps up, nearly tripped up, a flag comes in. He is past the 30, pushed out at the 23, but this one might come back for a hole. We had a nice flow to this game in the first period, and it's kind of been stuck in the mud here lately. Flags on every other play, teams starting to make mistakes and kind of getting their own way. Hold Number 68, second down. Chris DeLeon with the hold. He's a junior from Little Elm, Texas. A transfer from Cisco College. And again, both of these teams on, heavily penalized in non-conference play. Bethune Cookman. 24 penalties on the season coming into the ball game today. They average 87 and a half yards in penalties per game. Grambling averaging 100 yards in penalties per game. Both coaches vowed to get that cleaned up. But both teams Early struggling period. with that here in the second period. Gain of a yard. Short carry, gain of one or two. Ray Sean Bird. And again, those are the things, Matt, that can disrupt an offensive game plan. You come in with your game plan. You know, you know what you want to attack on the other team down. defensively. Well, when you start to get the these holding penalties, these false starts that put you behind the chains, and it makes it more difficult for you to pick up those first downs and keep drives alive. Third and 19, they must get to the 30-yard line of Grambling for a first down. Think of a handoff under pressure. Scrambling more, flips it out to the right side, hit immediately. Good coverage from Grambling on the third down play. It was Bird, the running back, with his first catch today. Yeah, good job by the Bethune-Cookman giving Jones time in the pocket. You saw he wanted to break and run, but he said, oh, it's third and 19. I need to throw this football, but he could not find a receiver open downfield. Excellent job on the back end by the Grambling Tiger defense. They started at the 40, but could not advance past it after the penalties. And now it's Benjamin Lennon, the Australian punter, back to punt. Timeout. Timeout with the Cookman before the punt. Right now, we'd like to remember 1917. Welcome to Allstate, where the safer you drive, the more you save. Like Rachel here. How am I looking? The most cautious driver we got. Am I there? Looking good. Safe driving and drive-wise saves you 40% with Allstate. Who needs caffeine? Oh, you're the best. How should we pay you back? Zelle, of course. I always ask for Zelle. Great. I'll just... With Zelle, the money goes straight into my bank account. And it works even if you bank somewhere different than I do. I actually... So in conclusion, you should always ask for Zelle. Oh, looks like we have some late arrivals. I'll take it from the top. Zelle, look for it in your banking app. Visa is a network keeping online shopping easy and secure, so you can get inspired to click here, scroll there, watch this, and buy this to find your new side hustle. Wherever your passion takes you, pay with Visa. I want to hire you. A woman was killed. Somebody set me up. I lost 15 years of my life. It's not over. It was a killer for hire. I want to go back to work. Now show me what you can do.
Adam. <laughs> Looky what I got. Is that the new iPhone 14 Pro? Yep, with this amazing new camera. Smile. And you got it on Verizon. iPhone 14 Pro on them. You should get one. Wow, you can hustle. Get a new iPhone 14 Pro on us. And get it with one unlimited for iPhone. Only on Verizon. Online personal styling. What's that? That's Stitch Fix. Yeah. And how can you help me? We do the shopping for you. How do you know what I like? And what fits. You tell us your size, budget, and style. Wait, is it a subscription? No commitment required. SWAC football presented by Pepsi Zero Sugar, 1917 Grambler. Bethune-Cookman calls time before this punt. Jimmy Isles, the Australian, will punt for midfield. And it bounces out of the end zone. And it probably works out in the end. Bethune-Cookman, instead of a touchback, it's good field position against and a tough starting point for Grambling. Yeah, he got a nice little reverse bounce on that. Wish I could get that on my little uh, driver <laughs> on the golf course instead of going into the water. If I could get some reverse spin like that, I'd be in much better shape. But nice punt. It's Grambling inside the 20 and the uh, Tigers with a two-point lead. Four minutes, 32 seconds to go here before halftime. See if they can get their offense cranked back up again. Hawkins had a nice little run there. Uh, completed eight consecutive passes at one point through the interception in the end zone. See if he can get back on track. Handed off on first down. Chance Williams off to the left. Fighting for an extra yard or two. Williams, a freshman from Baton Rouge out of Scotlandville High School. He's trying to run behind big Tyler Thomas, number 51 there. But a good job laterally, defensively sideline to sideline by Bethune Cookman, shutting off his running angle. He did, was able to pick up a nice game, so it'll be second down. We'll call it about three. Defense. Defense. Back up the middle for Chance Williams. Chance Williams. Back to back carries here. Another three-star recruit picked up by Grambling. Offers from Washington State, South Alabama, Memphis, Alcorn State. Throw to the left, incomplete. Nice pressure that time by the Wildcat defense. Forcing Hawkins to his right rush, trying to come back to the football. A little high went through his hands. So now it'll be second down and 10 for the Tigers. Hawkins from the shotgun. Three and a half minutes remain in the second period. Williams put in motion, fakes that way. Now looking to the right, flips it off to the right. It's incomplete. Great job again by the Bethune Cookman defense. They're looking for a penalty marker. The officials say no. Now they're going to talk about it. But Hawkins just threw that one away as they snuffed out the screen pass. And Coach Terry Sims and his defensive staff looking for intentional ground and saying there's no receiver in the area. And they won the argument. Yes. You don't see that very often. But there was no Grambling Tiger in the area. Intentional grounding is the call. Good pursuit by Bethune Cookman. This has been a day of big gains. Arnold's 97-yard kickoff return for a touchdown made it 14-7 Bethune Cookman. We had the safety. Bird caught in the end zone. Now Joshua Reed, part of this nine loss for Grambling, down 17-10, but now leading and with the ball approaching halftime. Yeah, let's take a look at it here. You see Hawkins still inside. It's third down. But there is no receiver in the area. Third and long for Grambling. 
Stepping up towards the 10. Nice run from Hawkins. Hawkins over the 20, near the 30. Tackled from behind, still shy of a first down. But he makes it a more manageable punt situation here on fourth. Nice job exactly by Hawkins. Picking up some positive yardage. Get away from the end zone so your punter has a lot more room to work with because you know Bethune-Cookman, they're going to come after him if he's back up near the end zone. So Connor you get a chance to flip the field position here if you can get a good kick away. It's a battle of Australian punters today. Jimmy Isles for Grambling, Benjamin Lennon for Cookman. Isles is back on. 22 punts on the season before today. It's a pretty good punt. Bounces around the 37. Takes a pro grambling roll inside the 30. And with the cookman will start at the 29 yard line with 224 left in the second quarter. So the thing that has changed so far in this second period, the penalties have escalated and now, both teams. Grambling, nine penalties for 61 yards here in the first half. With Bill Cookman, five for 49. So both ball clubs started off rolling, but they have been hampered by penalties on both sides of the ball. With Bill Cookman trying to get some momentum back on offense after some big plays in the first quarter. Jones keeps it. Jones brought down. He wasn't fooling anyone. Anderson with the sack. A great job by Anderson. He read that one perfectly. Shed the block, and Jones had no chance. 6'5", 240-pound junior out of College Park, Georgia. Sundiati Anderson. One of the studs on the D-line is second sack of the season, his first today. Off to the right side with Quayshawn Bird. Bird on a carry. Gain of two. So you see this Grambling Tiger defense now. They're starting to dominate up front. Bethune Cookman had it going in the first period on the ground game. Like we're going to have a timeout on the field. Right. Bill Cookman so far in this ball game, 119 yards on the ground, only 36 yard passing for the Wildcats here this afternoon. Terry Sims, his offense trying to come up with a third and long play. Minute 44 to go here before halftime. Grambling will also have the football first coming out of the halftime break. So a chance for Hugh Jackson if they can get off the field here. You see the big sack there. Anderson's one of these studs on the defense. First team all swack last year, preseason all swack. That was his third sack of the year. Now it's Jones on third and long, fakes it, actually hands it off. It's a good... Burst up this left side. Punched out at the 34. Late flag comes in. Another flag here in Daytona. Myron Stewart, the safety, applied the hit. Personal foul. Illegal block below the waist. Number eight, offense. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Dylan Lee with the illegal block below the waist. And now yeah. another punt coming for Benjamin Lennon for Bethune Cookman. Yeah, once you're outside the tackle Four box in the backs. open field, you cannot cut low anymore. You have to stay above the waist when you're engaged with a defender. So that would have been a 15-yard penalty had they accepted it, but with it being fourth down, they're going to go ahead and take the play force Bethune Cookman to punt it away. Gremlin will they can get good field position, see if they can open it up and get some more points here before half. Benjamin Lennon, transfer from Utah. He's an Aussie Rules football player before 
playing American football. Good pressure, but Lennon's punt is away. Oh, and a bad goodness. penalty there, defenseless receiver. But we'll see if Crambling tries to take this back. There's a flag, and they might decline that penalty. It's all the way up into Bethune-Cookman territory. Seemed like a broken play after the tackle of the would-be return man. Yeah, that's, that's just, sometimes you have physical penalties and sometimes you have mental penalties. That was a mental penalty by Bethune-Cookman. I mean, clearly you cannot hit the guy. Now, he got pushed in the back by the Grambling blocker, which kind of made his momentum go into the receiver. I don't know if the officials picked that up, but you saw number two push him in the back, and his momentum carried him into the defender. So With let's see Jaylen the call. Joseph, who was taken down, he was ready to return that kick. Illegal block in the back. Receiving team number six. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. There you go. So there's no penalty for running into the receiver. It's the block in the back. Excellent call by this officiating crew. Goes against Ray Estes for Grambling. So now that may change the dynamic for Coach Hugh Jackson on how aggressive he wants to be offensively here in the final 64 seconds, depending on where this penalty flag ends up spotting the football. Instead of having the ball around the 35-yard line, with the cookman, it comes all the way back inside the 20. Grambling would start at the 17 with 104 left in the first half. They want to play it a little safe here. See how Coach Hugh Jackson, but he decides to dial up. Talking so far in the first half. Now he started off eight of nine. He's nine of 14 now for 169 yards, one touchdown, one INT. Grabbing takes over first down on the 17. Rotarius Hawkins has three to the left, one to the right. One of the backfields. Come on, Kansas, make some noise. First and 10 from the 17 with 64 seconds left in the second. Hawkins steps up as a man over the middle. First down pickup to begin this series. C.J. Russell who had the 61 yard catch earlier this half. First and 10 going deep down the left sideline. Flag comes in incomplete. A second flag comes in. There's a flag in the middle of the field and one on the sideline. Throw it deep, see if one of two good things can happen. Either you can come down with the reception or you draw the PI against the defender. Looks like the defender had really good coverage there. I mean, that could be offensive pass on the field, if anything. There are two fouls on the play. Illegal substitution. Defense. That penalty is declined. Pass interference. Defense, number one. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Mari Hill Robinson, he had the interception at the one-yard line earlier in the quarter. At the time, he's called for the pass interference. I thought Robinson really had good position on the inside. Fans. This a tough call for the Wildcats, but it'll be a first down for Grambling out at the 43 yard line. Still 40 seconds to go here before halftime. Coterius Hawkins from the shotgun fakes the handoff, back pedals, steps up, and a flag comes in, likely for a hole before the incompletion. Job by Hawkins escaping the pressure, throwing it out of bounds. But as you mentioned, Matt, this may be coming back as well. Holding. Alphonse, number 51. 10 yard penalty. It's first down. 
And with that, Rambling. I don't know if we have a stat for how many consecutive plays with the flags. <laughs> it's a half a dozen on my unofficial count. It's not the 4th of July yet, is it? It feels like it outside someplace. From the 33, play fake, off to the left, short game. Good job, snuffing out that screen on the right side. Coming up to make that stop. Looks like it was Hill Robinson again. Number one in the Wildcats on the stop. Here's Faison Wilson there. He had the touchdown catch for nine yards, his first collegiate touchdown. First time they used him in a short situation like that. Flipping it out to the left. Oh, nearly my intercepted. Goodness. They went back to Wilson. It was nearly picked off. <laughs> it was nearly a carbon copy of the interception in the end zone. Hill Robinson reading the play perfectly, undercut the receiver, and Hawkins threw it right to him once again. Bethune Cookman had a good lead, but nine straight points for Grambling. Quick thought from you, Ken Moore. Well, both teams slowed down by penalty markers here so far. And um, as we go to the break, both of these coaches are going to have to get everything cleaned up. Nine unanswered points for Grambling. It's 19-17, Tigers in Daytona. Thanks for having us. Oh, and here's the money I owe you. <laughs> so whenever we need to get paid back, we always ask for Zelle. The money goes straight into my bank account. Put it in your pocket. I prefer it in my bank account. Okay. Dessert? Yeah. Zell. Look for it in your banking app. I've never run an ultras before. I like the.
Welcome back to Daytona halftime between Bethune and Cookman. And Grambling, it's the BCU band, the Marching Wildcats, 325 members. With the instrumentalist, the sophisticated flag horn, 14 karat gold dancers, affectionately known as the Pride, trying to bring the finest halftime performances to viewing audiences. A two point game in Daytona and the swack opener for both teams. USAA Renters Insurance for the stuff you love. Because if it's worth lugging up five floors, it's worth protecting for as low as 33 cents a day. It's that simple. USAA. What you're made of, we're made for. From out of the blue, every room can be more innovative. With some of that, and a whole lot of this. Meet our exclusive dent and scratch resistant stain master laminate. Check out our most innovative products. Only at Lowe's. You're never responsible for unauthorized purchases on your Discover card. I've never run in ultras before. I like them. They feel cushiony. They feel stable. I'm loving the super bright colors. It's fun, flashy. You have more room for control. They're also secure around my very narrow feet, which is something that I struggle with. I was resigned to give up on running, but oh great, in these ultras. This one sold me. The cushion was excellent to handle that terrain out there. I'm pretty much sold. <laughs> Hashtag, what was I doing before? Honestly, Ultra's my new shoe, and I've clearly been missing out. <laughs> Trust me, I got the perfect ride. Yes, you you done with the tickets? Still no signal. Oh, it has Wi-Fi. Just log on from your phone. Really? Thanks, Dad. I got you, baby girl. Oh, y'all fit in there? Okay, Hyundai. It's your journey. The new Hyundai Palisade. This is a bad idea. Most people move out of the city when they have kids, not into it. You think Josh is going to be okay? He's probably having the time of his life. That was awesome. He's not dangerous. He's a crocodile. He can sing. They will have him taken away. Hide him. How much further? Lyle! Lyle, Lyle Crocodile. Rated PG. Welcome to Fidelity Bloom, a new way to help you save while spending. Get a 10% match on your first $300 of deposits and earn up to 25% cash back on all purchases made within the app. Give your money a chance to flourish. I want to hire you. A woman was killed. Somebody set me up. I lost 15 years of my life. It's not over. It was a killer for hire. I want to go back to work. Now show me what you can do. Welcome back to Daytona. Matt Peters with Ken Moore. Now time for the SWAC News in Notes presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors, official sporting goods and outdoor retailer of the SWAC. We have a feature game tonight, Ken. Six Eastern time, Florida A&M and Alabama A&M. Yeah, two really good ball clubs, two teams that will contend for the SWAC championship uh, later this year. Kickoff tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern time. The SWAC Football Weekly Honors Jackson State 
three guys, Niles Gaddy, Alondro Mata, and Savion Wilkinson, along with Grambling State's Quaterius Hawkins. They have been named the SWAT Football Players of the Week for their performance last week. And, of course, Jackson State, they are ranked number 11 in FCS with a 3-0 record right now in a battle with Mississippi Valley. Starting to pull away. It was 14-7 Jackson State. Mississippi had the ball in Jackson State territory, but 14 unanswered points to make it 28-7. Now we look at the upcoming schedule for the SWAC. Week 5 sees Texas Southern against UTSA. That's underway from the Alamo Dome. 7-0 Roadrunners right now, just five minutes into that contest. And then we see Prairie View A&M visiting Alabama State later tonight in Montgomery. And then Arkansas Pine Bluff, they'll take on Alcorn State. That one in Lorman, Mississippi tonight as well. So a lot of action coming up on the SWAT schedule later this evening. Here is that scoreboard. Jackson State has tacked on seven more. It's 28 to seven. TSA, good start from Harris, the quarterback, for a 7-0 lead. UTSA leading Texas Southern in the first quarter. Then the three forthcoming games, Alabama A&M visiting Florida A&M, Alabama State hosting Prairie View A&M, and UAPB against all Corn State. Here it's 19-17, a back-and-forth game. Grambling scored the last nine points thanks to a safety it gave them the lead from Joshua Reed. More from Daytona at halftime when we come back. We make USAA Renters Insurance for the stuff you love. Because if it's worth lugging up five floors, it's worth protecting for as low as 33 cents a day. It's that simple. USAA. What you're made of, we're made for. You're never responsible for unauthorized purchases on your Discover card. I want to hire you. A woman was killed. Somebody set me up. I lost 15 years of my life. It's not over. It was a killer for hire. I want to go back to work. Now show me what you can do. here. We started out around 1959. Then we took a hard left in East Africa. A right at Baja. A 180 in the empty quarter. And that 65 degree incline at Hell's Revenge. But we didn't do all that just to get here. We did it to give you a truck that'll take you anywhere. This is the new Nissan. Dyson's laser reveals invisible dust on your floor. Its powerful hypodemia motor sucks up those microscopic particles for a cleaner, healthier home. Exclusively in gold. Only at Dyson. I meet a friend. He can't talk, but he can sing. Just because a record has a fool, don't make it in the pool. He's not dangerous. We have to show people that they don't have to be scared of him. That was awesome. We got a crocodile on a motorcycle. <laughs> Lyle Lyle Crocodile. Rated PG. October 7th. From out of the blue, every room can be more innovative. With some of that and a whole lot of this. Meet our exclusive dent and scratch resistant stain master laminate. Check out our most innovative products, only at Lowe's.
Rothy's. That's more like it. When you start with better ingredients, better pizza, you also get better papadillas, better cheese sticks, better yummy this, and better tasting that. You with this, or you can go with that. Get any two or more for just six ninety nine dollars each. That. Halftime at Daytona Stadium between Grambling and Bethune Cookman. And more coming up at halftime. Field judge, Tangela Mitchell. Bank judge, Jerry Vinia. Side judge, Torlin Smith. Girl, you can do better. At least with your big name wireless carrier. With Xfinity Mobile, you can get unlimited for $30 per month on the nation's most reliable 5G network. They can even save you hundreds a year on your wireless bill over T-Mobile, AT&T, and Verizon. Wow, I can do better. Yes, you can. I can do better, too. Now, you really can do better. Switch to the fastest mobile service, Xfinity Mobile. Now with the best price on two lines of Unlimited. Just $30 a line. Trust me, I got the perfect ride. Download the ticket. Still no signal. Oh, it has Wi-Fi. Just log on from your phone. Really? Thanks, Dad. I got you, baby girl. Oh, y'all fit in there? Okay, Hyundai. It's your journey. The new Hyundai Palisade. Really? Really. Free testing and charging? And if you need a new one, we've got you. Really? Welcome to America's number one battery destination. AutoZone, your battery solution. Adam, look at what I got. Is that the new iPhone 14 Pro? Yep, with this amazing new camera. Smile. And you got it on Verizon. Even better. I got Verizon's new plan. It includes Apple One. That's Apple Music, Apple TV Plus, Apple Arcade, iCloud Plus. I hear the acting's pretty good on that one. So is the deal I got from Verizon. iPhone 14 Pro on them. You should get one. Ooh, selfie time. Wow, you can hustle when you need to. Get a new iPhone 14 Pro on us. And get it with one unlimited for iPhone. Only on the network America relies on. Verizon. Better ingredients, better pizza, better brace yourself. Because Papa John's has done it again. Introducing Papa Bowls. No crust, just a whole bunch of those Papa John's toppings you love. Baked to piping hot perfection. I'm talking crisp veggies, savory meats all covered in melty cheese, and those signature sauces. Try flavors like Italian Meats Trio, Chicken Alfredo, and Garden Veggie. Or get creative and build your own Papa John's. Is he? Go. Too late. Oh, 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 oh. Disney's Hocus Pocus 2 rated PG streaming September 30th only on Disney Plus. I really want that personal price plan. Mr. and Mrs. Alvarez, I save my shrimp tails. Oh. I have a whole collection. I keep them in jars under my bed. You don't need to get that personal. The State Farm Personal Price Plan helps you create an affordable price just for you. She also plays piano. Yeah. With my feet. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. Swack football presented by Pepsi Zero Sugar from Daytona. And at halftime, Grambling State leading with the hoop in 1917. Matt Peterson with Ken Moore. It was a really explosive first quarter and a penalty late in second quarter. Yeah, we really got off to a fast start in the ball game here today. Both offenses going up and down the field, but it came to a uh, staggering halt in that second period as both teams committed a lot of penalties. In that first half, 17 combined penalties in the first half for both ball clubs. That is not going to get it done. Let's take a look at the highlights from this one. Bethune Copen coming off the bye week. And after a long drive, 
keyed by a long run of 81 yards from Crayshawn Bird. It was Marcus Riley, a four-yard catch. Yeah, nice job by Riley, and then Grambling comes right back. Dedrick Talbert, three-yard touchdown run, capping off in the 11-play, 75-yard drive. That tied the game at seven. Insulin kickoff, a little razzle-dazzle by the Wildcats, and Darnell Dees takes it 97 yards to the house as the Wildcats went on top. 14-7. Then both teams traded field goals. Grambling marched down the field after that 97-yard touchdown run. Garrett Urban, the Houstonian, with his seventh field goal of the season. He's now seven for 10. We're closing out the half. Hawkins to Wilson for the touchdown. That made it 17-17 at that point. Grambling with a late safety by Joshua Reed made it 19-17 at the break. We're coming back with second half action right after this. Here's the halftime stats. And they're presented by Crickets. See Smile, Grambling you're on Cricket. Dominating the statistical categories. 15 first downs to six. Passing yardage. All Grambling, 175 to 36. He had the big run by Bird that accumulated a lot of that 131 yards, 81 yards on one carry. And you look at the time of possession and the third down. Bethune Cookman, 0 of 5 on third down. And again, not shown the penalties in the first half. Ten penalties for Grambling, seven for Bethune Cookman. Whoever can create the least amount of mistakes in the second half will have an excellent shot to win this one. You had the 81-yard run from Krayshawn Burr on the first series. Only 50 rushing yards since, only 30 passing yards since. So since that breakout play, you really have 80 yards total of offense for Bethune Cookman through two quarters. Yeah, the Grambling defense has done an excellent job after those first couple of drives by Bethune Cookman. They really settled down defensively. Coach Hugh Jackson and his coaching staff, they're looking for trying to get the first swag win of the season. Of course, the season opener for both ball clubs. Grambling played Jackson State last week, gave them a battle. That was a non-conference game, even though you had both teams playing against each other. Technically, it was non-conference. So, Hugh Jackson trying to go 1-0 on the season against Terry Sims. And now the challenge for Grambling, Ken Moore, is finishing a game. You talked about it in the first half. They've been basically even with their opposition through the first three games in the first half. But uh, they have not played well in the second half. Yeah, so far this season in the first half, they're even with opponents. 58 to 58 on the scoreboard. Second half has been a different story. The Grambling Tigers have been outscored 87 to 16 in the second half. So the message at halftime today, I'm sure for Coach Hugh Jackson, finish what you started. The Grambling really rose to the occasion. The final nine points of that second quarter scored by Grambling, and they will get the ball after Bethune Cookman went down the field on its first drive. So Bethune Cookman has some offensive issues to sort out in the second half. They relied on those big plays to score 17 points. It's Nikolai Daniel, the freshman from Georgia, to kick it away. This is the 10th meeting between these ball clubs all time. Grambling leads the series 6-3. First meeting back in 1947. Grambling won that ball game 47-6. But Don Cookman, of course, won it last year 31-14. Short kick return for the 8 brought out to the 25. A helmet on the field. Heavy hit is applied. Antonio Jones, the freshman from Atlanta with the return. Again, remember in the first period, Grambling lost their left tackle, Melvin Priestley, to a apparent ankle injury. Looks like he is back on the field now, number 71. So he is back in the lineup to start the second half. Pretorius Hawkins is the quarterback. Jaden Handy is in the backfield. Hawkins had a hot start to the ball game, but cooled off in the second period. Ended up 11 of 18 for 175 yards, one touchdown, one INT. Handed off to the left side. Nice spin. He lowers the shoulder, stays on his feet. And 
wrestle down after a pickup of four. It's Jaden Handy, the freshman from New Orleans. Ninety-nine rushing yards in the first half, averaging four point three yards per carry for the Tigers. Grambling has used the stable of running backs today. Their starter Maurice Washington not available this afternoon. So four different ball carriers have handled the rock here this afternoon. Number twenty-five, Jaden Handy on the carry that time for a short game. Freshman out of New Orleans. Transfer from yeah, Ole Miss. Yeah, they want to be doing all the holding and pushing everybody. In. And we saw Chance Williams a few times in that second quarter. Talbert had the touchdown run to make it 7-7. Seven, seven. Also see C.J. Russell and Jalen Joseph as well. Here's Hawkins flipping it out to the left side. Catch made by the tight end Noah Bean. He lowers the shoulder for a first down. Another catch for the grad transfer from UNLV. Noah Bean, his second reception of the ball game. He had one big catch in the first half, called back by penalty. But a good job by Hawkins, just dumping it down in the flat. A lot of room to run there for Bean to pick up the first down. And Hawkins will go over to the sideline, and so we have a momentary stoppage to play. Not sure if we have an injured player or... Chance Amy is coming on. He's the backup quarterback. And he goes back to the sideline as we go to break. Just less than two minutes into the third quarter. Grambling is on the move. Up by two. You've got bars to raise. Expectations to exceed, status quo to rise above, and you've come to the right place because it all starts right here, which is precisely why we are so proud to support HBCU programs. Since 1837, historically black colleges and universities have been fulfilling their purpose to educate and empower. Since 2009, the Home Depot's Retool Your School Campus Improvement Grant Program has also been powered by a purpose to update, upgrade, and uplift HBCU campuses. Today, 44 million votes, $4.1 million, and 147 grads later, we remain inspired by the people, the passion, and the power of HBCUs to continue our purpose. Learn more at retoolyourschools.com. Dad, when is the future? Uh, oh wow. Um, the future is, uh, what's ahead of us? I don't get it. Yeah. Maybe this will help. So, now, we're in the present. And now, we're in the future. The all-electric Chevy Bolt EUV with available Super Cruise for hands-free driving. Dad? Yeah? Do fish get thirsty? Uh. Find new answers. Find new roads. Chevrolet. When was the last time you experienced something different? Dig in to support Black-owned restaurants. Daytona Stadium in Florida. Matt Peterson with Ken Moore grambling on the move before a timeout. It was 17-10 Bethune-Cookman. But Grambling State, a touchdown and a safety. And now the ball to open things in the third quarter. From the 45-yard line, a flag comes out. Movement up front, it looks like, for Grambling. You hate to have that coming out of a timeout. Five yard penalty, it's first down. That means it's time for Gremlin to back that thing up. 11th penalty today for Gremlin, now 76 yards. Something like Major Jackson, I'm sure he talked about it at halftime. I know he talked about pre game, but it's still a problem. The flag comes out. Brian from Williams. Williams on the carry. 
Him on back to back plays in that first quarter, but we haven't called his name in a while. Bethune Cookman. Definitely a uh, NFL prospect, Everett, for uh, Bethune Cookman. Yeah, six foot six, 250, but they just haven't been on the field offensively too much. No, just, um, you know, with the penalties and, and Brambling doing an excellent job defensively. Looks like one of the players cramping up a little bit. It is a warm day there in uh, Daytona Beach, so able to walk off. Under his own power, looks like number 17 there. Looks like that is Amari Jones. Jones, a sophomore from Western Florida. Transfer from East Carolina. And you think about that second quarter, we talked about the penalties, but you had the interception, which could have swung the game, I think, in Bethune Cookman's favor, Amari Hill Robinson. But they gave it right back to the Grambling, and now it's thrown off to this right side. Short pickup, maybe four yards. Yeah, nice tackle that time. Hudson coming up to make the hit. See Williams going to the sideline now as Grambling continues to rotate their running backs in and out. Williams looks like he may be a little winded. His chance was the catch, but after that interception, they also had the fumble on the kickoff return and then the safety. So a few mistakes plaguing Bethune Cookman in that second quarter. From the shotgun, Hawkins slings it to the left side. Good coverage. And a late flag comes in as the helmet comes off. Cash Foley, the intended receiver for Grambling. Mass intended for number 81. Well, it looks like it was Foley. Antonio Oliver coverage, coverage on the far sideline. One on one. Looks like he had a good defensive play for a while, and you see another Wildcat going down. So the heat may be starting to play a factor Defense, in some of these eight. injuries. 15 yard penalty. First down. 15 yard penalty on the PI. Gives Grambling a first down. Oliver in coverage. He's from Atlanta, transferred from New Mexico State after time at Mississippi Delta Community College. And again, Bethune Hookman just cannot get the offense on the field. They really had some quick, efficient drives. Remember, they led in that first with quarter that penalty, first down, with a couple of touchdowns and only one first down because the long 81-yard run and a 97-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. But since those two explosive plays, it hasn't been a lot with the ball. Up to the P.I., nice play fake. Handed off up the middle. More hard yards there for Jaden Handy. Yeah, nice off-tackle play that time. He's trying to pick up some positive yardage. Recoup some of that yardage after the penalty. And both of these ball clubs putting themselves in very long down and distant situations on second and third down. And it looks like we have another stoppage to play. It looks like we're going to have a time I call by Hugh Jackson. Timeout, Grambling. Grambling on the move into Wildcat territory, leading by two here in the third. You might have heard of Carvana and that we sell cars online. What you probably didn't know is that we're in the business of making you happy. We believe buying a car should be something that gets you hyped up. That you should be empowered to shop when you want, where you want, wearing whatever you want. And that your new car ought to come with newfound happiness and zero surprises. So we promise that we'll treat you right, we'll put you in control, and all of us will stop at nothing to drive you happy. We'll drive you happy at Carvana. Fact, we all love video doorbells. Voice assistants have changed our lives. We now control our home with a touch. Indoor and outdoor cameras help us keep watch. We want to guard our lives and hold tight to our loved ones everywhere. 
And you know what's better than all these things by themselves? All these things together from the most trusted name in security, ADT. You know, living Atkins for years now and having a killer sweet tooth, I've still got my candy drawer. And it's very well stocked with Atkins Indulge treats. There's plenty of my peanut butter cups, some chocolate coconut bars, peanut caramel cluster bars, and I never, ever run out of my peppermint patties. It's kind of like the day after Halloween, but without tons of sugar. At Avocado Green Mattress, we're in this for good, for healthy people and a healthy planet, to give more than we take. That's why we're proud to be 1% for the planet's 2020 Pinnacle Award winner. To be a certified B Corporation, to be organic, and to actually offset more carbon emissions than we produce. All to raise the bar for what it means to be a sustainable brand. Learn more at avocadogreenmattress.com. After the Grambling timeout... Grambling set to go from the 45-yard line. Matt Peterson with Ken Moore. Two-point game. Gretarius Hawkins hands it off. No gain. Nice defense there from the front line of Bethune-Cookman, stopping Jaden Handy. Yeah, so both defenses doing an excellent job. Of course, the offenses are assisting them by consistently putting themselves in bad down and distant situation. So now another third and long coming up for the Grambling Tigers. And you see Presley go down again. Looks like he may be cramping up. And you wonder if this heat is becoming a factor now. Warm afternoon down in Florida. And um, it's like Presley cramping up once again. And of course he is the leader on this offensive line, Coach Hugh Jackson said how much he's kind of becoming the leader of that group. He's really improved from week one through now, game four of the season. And um, they like to, he's the anchor, and they need it. Priestley back to his feet. It's going to reset this game, Ken. It was all Bethune Cookman early on. They had the 81 yard run. And the first drive of the game from Krishan Bird, a four yard touchdown cast for Marcus Riley, then the 97 yard kickoff return for a touchdown from Darnell Dees. But very quiet ever since that. Just one field goal. Grambling has fought back. They had the touchdown run up the middle from Derek Talbert. Faison Wilson, the three-star recruit with his first touchdown as a college player. A field goal from Urban, and then the safety from the star linebacker, Joshua Reed. That's the difference in this game. Third and four. A little slant. He's short of a first down. Good coverage in the open field from Bethune-Cookman. Yeah, that was a great open field tackle to get rushed down, not rushed down. Let's, let's see if they go for it. Fourth and one. They're going to keep the offense on the field. They're going to go tempo. Uriah Ratcliffe with the stop. They try to draw them offside, but it yeah. looks like... Drew their own selves offside. Yes. <laughs> timeout. Really? The session saw a timeout of the half. Of this drive, right before that fourth down play. Yeah, it would have been a false start because the entire right side of the offensive line moved before the football was snapped. So, luckily for Coach Jackson, he called that timeout. And they're only going to have one timeout remaining for the for the rest of this ball game. Uriah Ratliff had the tackle. He had a good season last year. Thirty-one tackles, two fumbles recovered in eight games. Junior from Jacksonville with that open field play to force the fourth down. Now, it'll be interesting to see here if Jackson State tries to draw Bethune Cookman offside, or if they're actually going to go ahead and snap it and run a play. Grambling's one for one on fourth downs today. 
two for six on third downs. Part of the problem for Bethune Cookman, Ken, is the inefficiency on third downs. Bethune Cookman 0 for 5 on third downs today. Fourth and one. Handed off. And he looks like he got it just to the 40 yard line. Forward progress will give him the first down. Uh, looks like that was uh, Dietrich Talbert. He's been the power guy, short yardage guy here today. It's like he has a lot of beef on him. 5'11, 220 pound junior out of uh, Baton Rouge. So, new set of downs for the Tigers. They protect the two point lead, trying to add more as they move into Bethune Cookman territory. Grambling now two for two on fourth downs today. They have a 16 to six edge in first downs today. Handed off up the middle, a lot of bodies in there. It's Keelan Elder, junior from Duncanville High School in Dallas with the carry. You saw Bethune Cookman that time go to a traditional 4-3 defense. Try to put seven in the box to slow down this Grambling running game. The Tigers will try to spread them out now. Second and nine. Short throw off to the right. And a receiver with C.J. Russell. And as good as Hawkins was throwing the football in the first quarter, even in the through the first quarter and a half, he has really gotten off target. His fundamentals are starting to diminish. He's not planting that back foot, getting his shoulder square, and really throwing the football with the accuracy and poise that he did for the first quarter and a half. Third and nine, a flag comes in. It's a keeper. Like a busted play. Hawkins brought down, but a flag on the field. Offside, defense, number 14, five-yard penalty. It's third down. Repeat, third down after the offside. That's Gerald Pugh, the junior from Hollywood, Florida, transferred from Cisco College in Texas. That is the 21st combined penalty in this ballgame. We're still early in the third period. Third and four now. Rash is put in motion. A little confusion on the offense. Changes sides with Noah Bean, and the tight end. And will that be the third timeout taken by him? The third and final timeout of the half. Timeout crambling. They use three timeouts on the same series, Ken Moore. Yeah, I mean, no, that's, can't that's comes the frustration from Coach Jackson. And again, you got a new quarterback, right? Juco transfer coming in with a new team. As you look at the preseason poll in the SWAC on the East, Jackson State obviously came in favored overwhelmingly with FAMU, uh, predicted to be second in the East. Bethune-Cookman predicted to be fifth. You look at the West, Southern, who was shut out last week by Texas Southern, who was picked to finish last in the SWAC. I'm telling folks, watch out for Texas Southern. We saw Andrew Body last year yeah. as a freshman. I believe he's the second best quarterback in the SWAC behind Shadur Sanders. Watch out for TSU this year. We called him big play body against Alcorn <laughs> State at PNC Stadium. Back in play, it's thrown off to the right and out of play. Good job avoiding a sack from Pretorius Hawkins. We saw the standings. We saw the featured matchup tonight, Alabama A&M and Florida A&M. Those are the second and third place predicted finishers in the East. Yeah, both of those ball clubs well stacked, as you see Hawkins and the offense go to the sideline for Grambling. But it's going to be wide open uh, this year. You have a lot of excellent coaches in this conference, a lot of great quarterbacks in this conference. Um, whoever wins this ball game here today is going to feel good having some momentum between Grambling and Bethune-Cookman. So it is wide open early in the season. As we saw last week with Southern uh, getting shut out by TSU, um, it, it could be one of those years where you see a lot of uh, teams predicted to finish at the bottom, finish at the top. The punt goes into the end zone, but it is kept out of the end zone. 
Let's see. I yeah, think it's a, a touchback. Touch yeah, excellent tr- effort. Tried their best to jump <laughs> into the end zone and pitch it back. Nearly down inside the one, but it said Bethune Cookpin will get its offense going from the twenty-five. Large disparity, Ken, in the plays department. Uh, oh wow! Um, the future is uh, what's ahead of us. I don't get it. Yeah, maybe this will help. So now we're in the present, and now we're in the future. The all-electric Chevy Bolt EUV with available Super Cruise for hands-free driving. Dad. Yeah. Do fish get thirsty? Uh. Find new answers. Find new roads. Chevrolet. Let there be no doubt. You are ready for whatever comes next. You've got bars to raise, expectations to exceed, status quos to rise above, and you've come to the right place because it all starts right here, which is precisely why we are so proud to support HBCU programs. Some college players give it their all. But when I say player, I don't mean the ones with the ball. I mean the ones that play drums, the brass, the woodwinds. These players bring excitement to the stadium. Because for them, halftime isn't a break. It's game time. Pepsi is a proud supporter of HBCU students. Pepsi and HBCUs, that's what I like. With Academy Sports and Outdoors, you can take outdoor fun to a whole new level with just the touch of a button because there's so much to discover on the Academy app. Create your dream outdoor living space that gets the whole family out there spending time together. Master new recipes with just the right amount of heat and the perfect spice or seasoning. And give the kids even more ways to play. Great times are waiting. Download the Academy Sports and Outdoors app today. Bethune Cookman gets the ball for the first time of the second half. They'll start from the 20 yard line with the quarterback, Jalen Jones. From the shotgun, flip it out to the right side and brought down in the backfield. Excellent defense from Grambling. Marcus Riley with the catch. And Jalen Jones has gone all the way today at quarterback in the first two games of the season. We've seen all three quarterbacks on the field for Bethune-Cookman. But so far, Jalen Jones has been in control. He has Walter Simmons and Tyrone Franklin Jr. behind him. Loss of three, second and 13 now for Jones and the Wildcats. Jones off to the left side. High throw brought in nicely. We'll try and turn the corner, but excellent pursuit from Gramley, but maybe a late hit penalty as the flag comes in late. Very unnecessary. Looks like that was number four, Joshua Reed, the junior linebacker out of Houston, and he's going to hit, get hit with a 15-yard penalty. Watch it here. Just a little swing out. They have him corral. Stewart and Matthews oh, have him out of Lay bounds. out of bounds. And then unnecessarily, four, Reed just comes in. And, from the end of the run, automatic first down. And that's going to cause first a down so Matt, that, sorry, Ken Matthews had the tackle. He was the SWAC Defensive Player of the Week. Career high, 14 tackles, four and a half tackles for a loss against Arkansas State in Week One. And he seemed like really good coverage besides that late hit. And that's the first first down in four series for Bethune Cookman. They came out of the gates, the long drive on the ground, kickoff return for a touchdown, then a field goal. Since then, safety punt punt. No first downs the last three series of the first half. They get the first down via the penalty here in the third. Yeah, see if they can get Jalen Jones going here. Give him a little confidence. Off to the oh left. Big goodness. hit. It's that man again. We just talked about him, Lewis Matthews. Wow. Matthews with the tattoo job. 
5'11", 220-pound linebacker. And this Grambling defense, they're going sideline to sideline now. They are not letting Bethune-Cookman turn up field. At that one big run, you see the lumber laid by Matthews there. Heavy hit laid on Quayshawn Bird. Bird had that big run in the first quarter, but everything has been shut down by this Grambling defense here since then. Second down from the 32. Bethune-Cookman down by two points. Hand it off again. Pick up a three or so. There was Cameron Richardson. He's a big body up front. 6'2", 300 pounds. The senior from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Another third down coming up here, as you mentioned. 0 for 5 on third down, Bethune-Cookman in the first half. Let's see if they can convert a third and six. Jalen Jones on third and six. He puts Averett in motion to the right. Averett moves out to the right. It's thrown over the middle, first down. Much needed first down into Grambling territory. That's Deveno Ellington. Good protection this time. Quick read by Jalen Jones in the pocket. Hits the receiver in motion. Good catch across midfield. First down, Ellington. The second catch of the season for Davino Ellington, a junior from Panama City, Florida. First third down conversion of the afternoon for Bethune Cookman. Back to the ground for Birdie. Bounces out to the left. Stiff arm out of bounds inside the 40. Nice pickup on first down for Quayshawn Burt. These offenses just trying to get into rhythm, see if they can have three or four positive plays without a penalty happening. Good job by Bird, still for him, getting out of bounds. Picked up about seven on that play. Tim Cookman with only seven first downs this afternoon. Jones on the shotgun. Fakes it. Throws it. Nice one-hand catch from Averett. He brings it in. He's inside the 10 and down to the 8. What a catch from Kamari Averett. Well, Everett, that's his longest reception of the season. A one-handed snag. The pass was thrown behind him. But a great job by the big tight end as he rumbles down inside the 10-yard line. Loses his helmet, so he'll have to come out for one play. But Kamari Everett with his first big play of the season. Played at Louisville, scored two touchdowns against Alabama in one game. It's the keeper. Big collision on the left side for Jalen Jones. The hole closes down at the quickly. Six. Big number 97 for the Tigers coming in to make the play. That's Lane Lewis. Went to Allen High School, the powerhouse up in North Texas. Where Kyler Murray went to school. A lot of great talent out of Allen. Second and goal from the six. Jones hands it off. There's a seam on the left side, but a nice tackle in the open field. May have saved a touchdown. That's Lane Lewis, the sophomore. From Allen High School, as you just mentioned, yeah, from Texas. Yeah, making back-to-back good plays. Listed as the bandit linebacker. Huge play in this game, Ken. Third and goal from the three. Yeah, Jalen Jones, he has to make a good decision here. Cannot afford a turnover, cannot afford a penalty. Hands it off up the middle, immediately met. It's the same man as the last play, Lane Lewis, with the stop. <laughs> he got the, the trifecta, first, second, and third down. Lane Lewis denying Bethune Cookman a chance to get into the end zone. So now decision time for Coach Terry Sims. Does he go for the field goal to try and reclaim, reclaim the lead, or does he keep his offense on the field? Fourth down. They will go for the field goal. Dylan Mongadam. He's three for four on the year before today. 
Good. is up and good. 20 yard field goal for Mogadam. His second field goal today is now five for six on the season. And Bethune Cookman takes the lead again. It's 20 to 19. But they had the big play to Averett on that drive that got him down inside the red zone. Tremendous snag by him. And he was able to get them in scoring position. Good job by the Grambling defense keeping them out of the end zone. But the field goal puts Bethune-Cookman back on top, 20-19 to 19, here at Daytona Beach. The first was from 23 yards. The second from 20 yards from Dylan Magadan. A dominance in total yards gained for Grambling, but they trail by a point. 309 total yards for Grambling. 185 for Bethune-Cookman, but the big plays of the first quarter give them an early lead. Key by the 81-yard run from Krayshawn Bird on the first series. And then the 97-yard kickoff return for a touchdown from Darnell Dees. The key plays for Bethune-Cookman of that first half. That was an 11-play, 76-yard drive, took 553 off the clock. It's through the hands into the end zone. Oh, and no. he's going to try and bring it out oh, very dangerously no. right across the face of the end zone. And he's brought down at the 10-yard line. Second time today we've seen Grambling bring it deep out of their own end zone and start off with poor field position. It's Antonio Jones, a freshman from Atlanta. I mean, it was through the hands into the end zone. There was two or three times for him just to take the 25-yard line, but he decided to try and bring it out. Good energy now on the Bethune-Cookman sideline. We heard from the coaching staff that more starters would be allowed to play special teams for Bethune-Cookman. Here is the first play. And the incompletion oh. knocked out at the last moment, nearly there for J.R. Waters. Great throw from Hawkins, but better coverage for the Bethune-Cookman secondary. Yeah, in and out of the hands. Great coverage that time. Looks like it was Gerald Pugh uh, making a defensive stop. Just getting his hand in there to knock that football away at the last moment. Would have been a big play for Graham. Pew, the junior from Hollywood, Florida, to nine, J.R. Walter, sophomore from Oxnard, California. He's a transfer from Oregon. Second down, similar play. This time it's brought in by Rash. He has a first down, another catch for the Baton Rouge native. Just a little dig route by Rash. Nice throw by Hawkins. So back-to-back -back nice throws by Hawkins. He struggled in the middle portion of this ball game. At one point, he completed eight consecutive passes in a cold spell. But now he's trying to get his Tigers the lead. First down, another pass attempt here from Hawkins. This time he'll run it. He'll move to the left. He has the first down. Good decision from Katerius Hawkins. No option downfield. He runs it for 12 yards, and he moves the chains. Yeah, and you saw wide receiver number 10, Lyndon Rash, on the outside not get that block in the back. Watch as Hawkins takes off here to his left. Watch number 10, the wide receiver, come in from the top. Decided not to block. Good decision. So he talks with Hugh Jackson. He has not been great with his feet this season, partially due to the offensive line play. All year, 16 runs for negative two yards, due largely to several sacks, but they haven't used his feet enough through the first three games. Yeah, you definitely want to use his athleticism. He's more of a thrower than, say, Jones is on the opposite side. For Bethune-Cookman, Jones will like to tuck it and run. Hawkins, he'll like to stand in the pocket. And Coach Hugh Jackson talked to him about, hey, step up in the pocket, put a little force behind your throws. First down for Hawkins over the middle, incomplete you in saw and the out force of the hands right of there. J.R. Waters. Perfect throw to Waters. Second time on this drive that Waters has not been able to hang on. You see him tap his helmet like, that's on me. My bad. He 
played at Oregon, then Southern Utah, and now at Grambling. Again, Waters, he has a lot of speed. All these skill position players on the outside for Grambling can run. They just have to catch the ball. Dumped off, nice play design. Out to about the 44-yard line. And C.J. Russell, who had the 61-yard catch in the first half. By the way, J.R. Waters, he was a four-star recruit coming out of high school, Oxnard High School in Southern California, was ESPN's number nine wide receiver in the country. A talented kid, very talented kid. You see Russell, Russell there, that was his third reception of the afternoon. On first down, it's handed off. Big seam up this right side. After the catch, they go back to Russell, who's done it both on the ground and through the air. Yeah, great job that time by the right side of that offensive line. Fourth carry of the afternoon for Russell. Six foot, 200 pounds out of Arcadia. A lot of Louisiana kids, as you would expect on this Grambling roster, but they get kids from all across the country. Second and two after the eight-yard game. It's Russell again. Hugh Jackson sticking with a hot hand. And he's got a first down. Good job defensively that time. Bethune Cookman holding him to a short game. As we approach one minute left here in the third quarter, Bethune Cookman holding on to a 2019 lead. They trailed 19-17 at halftime. Just got a 20-yard field goal to retake the advantage and trying to see if they can slow down this Grambling Tiger offense. First and 10 from the 44, it's Hawkins from the shotgun. There's a blitz. Hawkins will step up, he'll take off for the left side once again. He has a first down, he's inside the 30 and another good decision from Quaterius Hawkins, a first down run. Great job by Hawkins. He catches Bethune Cookman in man-to-man -man defense. So that means he's one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker, and Hawkins is going to outrun the linebacker to the sideline. 20 seconds left in the third. Hawkins from the shotgun. Another blitz. They bring the pressure. Hawkins is going to throw it away on the right sideline. Back-to-back -back blitzes from Bethune Cookman's defense. For the Wildcats dialing up the pressure now and their game plan coming in they wanted to try and get to Hawkins early in this ball game try to rattle him is what coach Darren Hayes talked about this week but they could not get to him early Hawkins was very comfortable in the pocket so now you see Bethune Cookman dialing up the pressure making Hawkins uncomfortable and making him try to throw outside the pocket second and 10 Hawkins throwing did he get a foot in he did Short gain, maybe three yards. Good footwork on the right sideline. That's Jaden Handy, the running back, making the catch in the flat. Three quarters in the books from Daytona. This is the final play of the third. A good one. Don't go anywhere. Bethune Cookman clinging to a one-point lead. Really? Really. Free testing and charging? And if you need a new one, we've got you. Really? Welcome to America's number one battery destination. AutoZone, your battery solution. Welcome to Fidelity Bloom, a new way to help you save while spending. Get a 10% match on your first $300 of deposits and earn up to 25% cash back on all purchases made within the app. Give your money a chance to flourish. Took a while to get up here. We started out around 1959. Then we took a hard left in East Africa. A right at Baja. A 180 in the empty quarter. And that 65 degree incline at Hell's Revenge. But we didn't do all that just to get here. We did it to give you a truck that'll take you anywhere. This is the new Nissan. 
I've never run in ultras before. I like them. They feel cushiony. They feel stable. I'm loving the super bright colors. It's fun, flashy. You have more room for control. They're also secure around my very narrow feet, which is something that I struggle with. I was resigned to give up on running, but oh, great in these ultras. This one sold me. The cushion was excellent to handle that terrain out there. I'm pretty much sold. <laughs> Hashtag, what was I doing before? Honestly, Ultra's my new shoe, and I've clearly been missing out. <laughs> Visa is a network that protects your purchases, so you can shop online with confidence and get into this, this, and try this? With zero liability, you're not responsible for unauthorized charges. Wherever your passion takes you, pay securely with Visa. We need someone to be there. Knowing they'll always care Someone who lights your way Each and every day Doing what you love is everything So we can celebrate the joy it brings There's so much to protect in our lives That's why Nationwide is on your side we're celebrating 50 years of Popeye's signature chicken with a deal you'll love. Now for just $6.99, takes 50 years of crunchy, juicy chicken we've been serving since 1972. Get the five-piece while you can for just $6.99. Love that chicken from Popeye's. Girl, you can do better, at least with your big-name wireless carrier. With Xfinity Mobile, you can get unlimited for $30 per month on the nation's most reliable 5G network. They can even save you hundreds a year on your wireless bill over T-Mobile, AT&T, and Verizon. Wow, I can do better. Yes, you can. I can do better, too. Now, you really can do better. Switch to the fastest mobile service, Xfinity Mobile. Now with the best price on two lines of Unlimited. Just $30 a line. We start the fourth quarter from Daytona Stadium. Swack football presented by Pepsi Zero Sugar. Matt Peterson with Ken Moore. Bethune Cookman dominated in the total yards category, but leading one nothing. Or, he ain't dominating right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> leading by one point. I should say one nothing. Back to pass over the middle, incomplete. To start the fourth quarter, a good throw from Hawkins, slightly overthrown Lyndon Rash, his intended receiver. Uh, we, we were looking at some of these numbers during the break, Matt, and Grambling really dominating this game statistically. You wonder how they're behind in this football game. They have run 63 offensive plays to only 34 for Bethune-Cookman, but the penalties for the Grambling Tigers, 13 penalties for 101 yards. Look, Bethune-Cookman, they've been – not real good themselves. Nine for 94. Grambling lining up for the game leading field goal. Urban's three for three on the season. He's hit one from 49. It is blocked. Blocked field goal from Bethune Cookman. Urban's field goal try is blocked. And now it's returned up near midfield and past midfield. Huge play to open the fourth quarter from the Wildcats. Bethune Cookman will take over. Grambling has had a problem. With their kicking unit this season, they had two PATs blocked against Northwestern State early in the year, and it rears its ugly head once again, coming off the edge. Let's see who the number was. 24, it looks like, got the block. And Ratliff reach covers and runs it back. That's Darnell Dees that got the block. It looked like Walls on the recovery, so a huge play. If it was Dees, that is a spectacular special teams performance. He had the 97-yard kickoff return for a touchdown in the first quarter, then a potential field goal block. Ratliff has been very active, and we talked with the coaching staff this week for Bethune-Cookman as they put the ball on the ground on first down. It was starters from offense and defense allowed to play special teams, and we're seeing the benefits here on display today. Yeah, and we, we always talk about, you know, the offense and the defense, and sometimes the special teams gets lost in the wash. But it has been the special teams today for Bethune-Cookman that has been the difference in this ball game. The 97-yard kickoff return and now the block field goal to preserve the lead. He steps up. Got to get rid of it. Throws it downfield, incomplete. 
Had a man wide open downfield, but could not get the ball quite deep enough for Daryl Powell, who was alone near the end zone. Yeah, but a good job by Jones to avoid the sack. You don't want to have a negative play there. Find an open area of the field where it can fall harmless, and now you got third down to try and move the chains. Jones just 9 for 12, 82 yards, but he's managed the game well. The only turnover today for Bethune-Cookman was on a kickoff return. Jones has done well protecting the ball. Now it's third and seven from the 40. Jones had the pass blocked. Good hands at the line of scrimmage. Wesley Green, the senior from DeSoto High School in Texas with the bat down. I think that was just really a low throw by Jones. I I don't think Green elevated a whole lot to jump up and knock that one down. I think Jones more so just kind of threw it into uh, no man's land there and it got deflected. So it's going to be a three and out after the blocked field goal attempt. Some of these quarterbacks trying to mimic Patrick Mahomes too much with a sidearm throw <laughs> from inside the pocket. I think that one was more by accident. Benjamin Lennon, the Australian punter. Former Aussie Rules football player. Continuing his career. Play at Utah. And a delay of game on the offense will back him up. Maybe by design to give him a little bit more room. Yeah, perhaps so. Move it back to the 45. 45. See if Grambling comes after him or if they try to set up the return. Benjamin Lennon punts it from the 43. A fair caught at the seven. I think that's our first fair catch all day today. Building champions for life didn't just happen overnight. Since 1920, the Southwestern Athletic Conference, SWAC, has been in the forefront in leadership and excellence in all our athletic programs. There are very few major sports halls of fame that a SWAC athlete is not a member. Hall of Fame coaches who were stewards and mentors to these elite athletes. Our tradition, our distinction, our legacy. We are the SWAC, building champions for life. Dad, when is the future? Uh, oh, wow. Um, the future is, uh, what's ahead of us? I don't get it. Yeah. Maybe this will help. So now we're in the present. And now we're in the future. The all-electric Chevy Bolt EUV with available Super Cruise for hands-free driving. Dad? Yeah? Do fish get thirsty? Uh. Find new answers. Find new roads. Chevrolet. Let there be no doubt. You are ready for whatever comes next. You've got bars to raise, expectations to exceed, status quo to rise above, and you've come to the right place because it all starts right here, which is precisely why we are so proud to support HBCU programs. When was the last time you experienced something different? Dig in to support Black-owned restaurants. Black Football on ESPN is presented by Home Depot, proud sponsor of the SWAC. Academy Sports and Outdoors, official sporting goods and outdoor retailer of the SWAC. And by Nike, proud sponsor of the SWAC. Back in play from deep in their own territory. A late flag comes in after the carry up the right side from Grambling as it starts its 
First possession of the fourth quarter. Keelan Elder with the carry. Conversations for our officials today. It's been a busy afternoon. Here, Eric, <laughs> personal foul, illegal block below the waist. Defense number five, 15 yard penalty. Automatic first 15 down. 15 yard penalty for the block below the waist wow. against Jaquan Jackson, junior from Dothan High School in Alabama, transferred from Southeast Missouri State. So now you let Grambling. Get good field position after the punt. You had them pinned deep. And now with that penalty, the Tigers will move out across the 25-yard line, and this allows Coach Hugh Jackson to have the entire offense at his disposal. From the 25, Hawkins threw into a tight window, and it's caught by Coleman. Nearly intercepted. That was a dangerous throw on first down. Five on the play. Looked like Antonio Oliver was right there. Defense. Hawkins now 18 Defense. of 32 throwing the football Defense. today. Defense. 227 yards. Hawkins over the middle again. Catch in stride from Coleman is fumbling at the 45 yard line covered by Bethune Cookman. And look who made the play. Number zero, Rosendo Lewis with the strip, and his teammates recognized the big play that he just made. <laughs> Hawkins, excellent throw, skinny post, and you see the right club come down from Lewis to knock that football away. Big turnover for the Wildcats. Amari Jones with the recovery, the linebacker, after Rosendo Lewis in his season debut. Grad student who transferred from South Carolina, missed 2020 with the quad injury, had surgery to repair a torn tendon. But this man played seven games as a true freshman at South Carolina back in 2018. And his biggest play with Bethune Cookman here in 2022, the strip leading to the recovery from Amari Jones. And the coaches just raved about his maturity, adding that level of confidence to that linebacker room for the Wildcats and his presence felt here in the fourth quarter. Huge play in this ball game. Play action over the middle into a tight pocket catch made and it's the big tight end with the catch, Kamari Averett. His helmet's fallen off the last two catches. Yeah, you gotta tighten up that chin strap. He's going back to the <laughs> sideline. He's got the goatee, now he's gotta add the chin strap. <laughs> Fourth reception of the afternoon for Avery. Came into the ball game with only two catches on the year. Here's Jones. And grambling territory back to the ground. I think Bethune would love to get the run game established again. It was awesome on that first drive. They went down the field, 88 yards, exclusively running the ball. It will go down as a four-yard touchdown pass, but it was effectively a run. A little shovel. But they have not been able to get the run game established since that opening drive. Yeah, and, and a lot of that has been due to the penalties on their side of the ball. And you have to give Grambling a, great, a, a lot of credit. They've done a great job defensively since that first quarter slowing down the Bethune-Cookman running attack. First down from the 45. Jones. Nice throw. Tripped up just shy of the first down. But the offense is now clicking for Bethune Cookman. Marcus Riley had the four yard touchdown catch to open the game. Great open field tackle by Ray Estes. That would have been a big game by Riley. Just quicker reads it feels like for Jones. They're getting the ball out of his hands quickly yes. to maybe his first or second option. They put Averett in motion. He's on the right side. Back to the ground. Krayshawn Burr, gain of one. Inside hand off the now it's going to be up to this Grambling defense to try to get off the field. And Coach Hugh Jackson talked about having to play complimentary football, the offense having to do their job, 
They came into the ball game today grambling, only possessing the ball for 22 minutes a game. They were losing time of possession by 16 minutes per game. Well, they flipped that today, but they've left some points off the scoreboard with untimely turnovers and penalties. They put Riley behind Joe, and they pitch it to Riley. It's the toss from the halfback, slightly underthrown. It was all there for Bethune-Cookman, perfect play design, but slightly underthrown. Corey Ree, the intended receiver. Riley, the former quarterback, could not get enough on the throw. Just floated it out there, and oh my goodness, Reed is all alone, and he can't believe it at the 10-yard line. Marcus Riley, four-star recruit, transfer from Louisville. Had Reed wide open, but sometimes you're afraid he's too open. You want to just put it in there perfectly, you and you don't put enough on it. You set those plays up all week, Matt. You set those plays up all week. You call it at the perfect time, and it's just does not convert it. Now you may have a delay of game here. Let's delay see. of game. Up. Timeout was called prior to the delay of game. Bethune Cookman called a timeout before the delay of game. We'll stay here for the timeout. Matt Peterson with Ken Moore. This has been a fascinating game. We knew both teams would try to run the ball, Ken. If you look at the stats coming into the game, Grambling defense allowing a 305 yards through the air, 230 yards rushing. For Bethune-Cookman, defensively, its defense allowing 270 yards rushing. So we knew both teams would try to run the ball, and they've done that quite well. But Bethune-Cookman has been better in the big moments today. Yeah, absolutely. They've been able to get the chunk plays. Uh, both teams averaging well on the ground. Bethune-Cookman, 152 yards on the ground today, averaging six yards per carry. Grambling, 158 yards on the ground today, averaging 4.8. After the short timeout, it's second and 10 from the 35. Fakes the handoff. He keeps it himself. Running to the right, he throws it. And he keeps his feet in, but he steps out at the six. Thought he would backpedal into the end zone. Looks like a catch on that sideline. To carry Allen Johnson, 5'770 pound junior out of Orlando. Watch Jones just kind of run up to the line. Did he cross the line of scrimmage is the question. Receiver did get his feet down in bounds. Looks like he may have stayed in bounds. That's going to be close. So you got two things here. Did the quarterback cross the line of scrimmage and did the receiver stay in bounds? They're going to go tempo. First and goal sure from the seven. No replay. Tries to buy him offside. And look at the argument here from the Grambling sideline. One of the assistants came over to talk with that official. That's Bethune Cookman sideline. They want it offside. Timeout. Bethune Cookman. Bethune Cookman has used another timeout. I love how they've opened the playbook here in the fourth quarter, though. We're seeing different things. The halfback pass. That was a nice design play where it looked like Jones was going to run, then he found him wide open Stay up to date with it was a real blown coverage Ken Moore as we saw Dakari Allen Johnson and there was no one within 15 or 20 yards for the Grambling defense yeah because Jones attacked the line of scrimmage and that brought everyone up thinking he was going to run the football and he pulled it up at the last moment and threw it and then of course, Bethune Cookman tried to get to the line, go tempo, so that the replay would not come into effect. And that caused the Grambling lineman to jump off sides, apparently. Um, I don't think we had a penalty flag there. You see it here, the throw. And you see the receiver, you see his foot. Yeah, he's on the chalk there. So he was definitely out of bounds. So a good call by the side judge there to properly mark it out of bounds. So it's gonna be first and go here inside the 10. It's Torland Smith, the side judge. They say on the ground, a last minute pitch off to the left. 
Oh, gambling. Jalen Jones with the lead. He tried to find Quayshawn Burr before his knee was down. Yeah, dangerous play by Jalen Jones that time. Riverboat gambling style. That time, just throwing it out there. I'm sure the heart of Terry Sims jumped into his throat. But luckily, the uh, tailback was able to pick it up off the ground. That was number five. That was Bird who was able to uh, gather it in. But it's going to be a loss of a couple. Second and goal for Bethune Cookman. Jones, the quarterback. Bird off his left hip. Two in motion to the left. Jones looking left, flushed out, throws it to the end zone, caught at the one yard line. Did he get in? He did. Touchdown, Bethune Cookman, Kamari Averett. Well, Matt, the big fella has come to play today. Use that big body like a power forward to block out the smaller defender. Great job by Jones. Staying patient as he rolled to his left. Nice throw in the end zone. And then Everett, Everett able to power his way back into the end zone for the touchdown. They will go for the point after touchdown. That was impressive strength and really good poise from Jalen Jones. Really I feel like it's his quarterback position to lose now because they use all three quarterbacks in the first few games, but that was a moment of maturity and just a, a real a real moment of I'm the quarterback for this team that entire drive. Exactly, yep. Stay poised in the pocket. You saw it on the nice throw on the play before where he found a receiver along the sideline. And then showing excellent patience that time, allowing his receiver to work free. And we may be having a review to confirm the scoring play. But every decision was the right one on that drive. The throws were good. He used his feet. It was the entire repertoire for Jalen Jones ending with this throw. Yeah, here's a look at it. You see the pressure flushed out. Yeah, he, he caught it in the end zone, yes, so it should have been a touchdown yeah. to begin with. Yeah. And he dives back over the pylon, so he, he, he had two touchdowns. The ruling on the field the was a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. They're going to review it just in case. Our referee, Eric Blunston. Kamari Averett, 2021, last season. 52 catches, 888 yards, and 10 touchdowns. If this one stands, this will be his fifth reception today. 65 yards and a score. I don't see this one being overturned. And as long as that stands, the number is starting to look very nice for Jalen Jones. He's up to 13 for 18. 137 yards and two touchdowns. Now here's something to think about. I think that's a touchdown. Yes. I mean, his feet are in the end zone when he catches the football. And even when he came back out, if you say he was out, when he came back, dove across to get it across the pylon. So I think either way, it's a touchdown. But now, strategy-wise, you're up by seven right now. You can kick the extra point and go up eight. It's still a one-possession game. Or you can go for two, make it a nine-point game. Then it's a two-possession game. Puts a lot of pressure on Grambling. Analytically, I would go for two right here because even if you miss it, it's a seven-point game. It's still one possession either way. Seven-point game, eight-point game, one possession. You go for two right now. If you're successful, it becomes a two-possession game. Puts a ton of pressure on Grambling offensively to have to score twice. I agree with you, Ken. The risk is worth it. If you don't get it, like you said, it's still a one-possession game. If you make the PAT, they have to make the two-point conversion at some point, but All right, this time we gotta bring that I like your back. thinking, Ken. I, I would do the same. The there we go. There First, we go. they have to confirm this touchdown as the wave makes its way around Daytona Stadium. Nice crowd on hand. Let's start it again. Making the most of this home game. Their next home game is November 5th. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. It's a touchdown. Mason Cookman 
controlling the second half. Grambling, which rolled into halftime, Ken, with all the momentum, has now been outscored 9 nothing since halftime, pending this point after touchdown. We're talking about finishing for Grambling. I think it was offside against Grambling. The PAT is up from here. I think this will count. That can become even more intriguing because you take that penalty, you get even closer. But I think they're just going to take Number this. Number zero. Penalty is declined. The try is good. It's an eight-point game. They elect to go the conservative route. Take the point. Now, Rambler 19. BCU 26. Dude Cookman. Best series of the season for Jalen Jones, the quarterback. Passing, throwing, and he found his man, Kamari Averett. Who had the touchdown. An eight-point lead for the Dude Cookman if they don't hold. Sunrise, we have to feel their souls. Whoa, 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 wait, can we talk about this? No. <laughs> we must fly, Simba! Disney's Hocus Pocus 2 rated PG, streaming September 30th. Stop! I am a good zombie! Only on Disney Plus. I'm the latest hashtag challenge, and everyone on social media is trying me. But if you don't have the right auto insurance coverage, you could be left to pay for all of this yourself. So get all state. We all love an excuse to wear something new. But why buy a dress you'll only wear once? Rent designer styles for up to 90% off retail. With Rent the Runway, you can wear it all without buying a thing. Drama for that wedding, satin for that party, florals for that weekend away. With the free backup size for the perfect fit. Dry cleaned and delivered to your door. So if you want it, rent it. With thousands of looks from designers you love, you can buy nothing and wear it all. Start renting from $30 at renttherunway.com. Melting bread and baking shred and slice and dice and spice and rice and if you're swissing it then you're missing it frying and frying and savor and savor and over rotini inside a panini egg and main inside and plain and debunk the inglorious once it's victorious square it. Adam, looky what I got. Is that the new iPhone 14 Pro? Yep, with this amazing new camera. Smile. And you got it on Verizon. iPhone 14 Pro on them. You should get one. Wow, you can hustle. Get a new iPhone 14 Pro on us. And get it with one unlimited for iPhone, only on Verizon. We're celebrating 50 years of Popeye's signature chicken with a deal you'll love. Now for just $6.99, takes 50 years of crunchy, juicy chicken we've been serving since 1972. Get the five piece while you can for just $6.99. Love that chicken from Popeye's. Welcome back. Matt Peterson with Ken Moore. And now the SWAC scoreboard presented by Chevy. Fine new roads. And look at Texas Southern hanging around with Andrew Body, 21-17 against the Roadrunners. Yeah, TSU. I mean, they're a tough ball club. They're going to be a tough out for a lot of ball clubs this year playing with UTSA who gave Texas a tough game and gave U of H a touch game. Uh, Jackson State all over Mississippi Valley as we expected, 49-7. And then a few big games coming up tonight, Alabama A&M and Florida A&M. That one coming up at 5 p.m. Uh, Central, 6 p.m. Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. Then we also got Prairie View A&M and Alabama State and Arkansas Pine Bluff and Alcorn State. That game will be on HBCU Go. But Kick here, 27-19, still a one-possession game. Grambling going to have to kick it back in gear. 10-0 Bethune-Cookman since halftime. Squib kick picked up at the 12-yard line, brought out, and pushed out around the 20. So again, tough field position to start things off. And look at the energy now in the Bethune-Cookman special teams group. Yeah, yeah. We, we talked about that with Coach as well. He talked about, you know, those, those crazy guys on special teams. And he pointed out 27 right there in your picture, Stephen Sparrow. And said he'll hit anybody. He's a freshman. He'll hit his own guys. He'll hit the other team. If you're in his way, you're going to get hit by Sparrow. He makes a big play there on special teams. But now is the critical part of this ball club for either ball club. You cannot have critical penalties. Yeah, you're excited. Yeah, you're aggressive. But you have to play 
before the whistle. You cannot play after the whistle. Hawkins from the shotgun, fakes the handoff, throws it to the right, wrapped up immediately, good coverage out there. Still a pickup of six or seven with forward progress. On the catch from Lyndon Rash. And going back to that story about Sparrow, he said, in a prior game, he said, coach, did you see me? I put his face in the grass. And he said, yeah, you got the wrong tackler. And he said, yeah, but I got his face in the grass. <laughs> like, yep, you did. <laughs> you get an A for effort. Gain a six, second and four. Grambling playing with tempo down by eight. Hawkins, clean pocket. Nice throw to the right side. It's a first down. Catch brought in by Claude Coleman, the sophomore from Baton Rouge. Coleman having a big game this afternoon. That's his fifth reception. Nice deep out route. Excellent throw by Hawkins. Grambling picks up a first down. First and 10 from the 44. Coleman came into this ball game with only one reception on the season. It's his fifth this afternoon. Backpedaling, now moving to the left. It's Quaterius Hawkins. Into Bethune Cookman territory. Nice job by Hawkins. Did not have a receiver open downfield, just tuck it and run. Pick up about six or seven yards. Make it a manageable second down. Remember, Grambling used all three of its timeouts on the first possession of the second half. They did not get any points from that. So they have no timeouts for these final seven minutes and 40 seconds. Back to the ground on second and two. Just a little inside counter play. They love to pull the tackle. Big 79 leading the way through the hole that time. Shantae Cole. Tailback right behind him. Short game. Talbert with the carry for a first down. He had the four yard touchdown run in the first quarter. First and 10 from the 45. Grambling on the move, but down by eight. Hawkins back to pass, low throw, incomplete. Probably best that Talbot dropped that one because he would have been dropped for about a five-yard loss. Great coverage that time closing in was pew. He's had a busy day today. Junior from Hollywood, Florida has been in around the football quite a bit. Here's Hawkins. Trying to set up the screen. It's well covered by Bethune Cookman. They were ready for that. Brings up third down. McKenzie and Grant with the tackles. Huge third down coming up here for the Tigers. See what Coach Hugh Jackson draws up. The third Cookman crowd making noise. Six and a half minutes to go here in the fourth. Third and ten for Criterius Hawkins. Throwing to the right. Incomplete. It was a good throw to the tight end, Noah Bean, maybe peaking to where the first down marker was before he brought the football in. And Beans had a good afternoon, had a couple of grabs, 19 yards, but he dropped that one wide open in the flat. And it may be four down territory now for Coach Hugh Jackson and the Grambling Tigers. They're going to keep the offense on the field. They're two for two on fourth downs today, but this will be the most difficult fourth and 10 from the 45. And I think the fact that they don't have any more timeouts left plays into this decision. Because you could punt and flip the field. Fourth and 10, Hawkins has time. Steps into the pressure, incomplete. It was a good throw. It would have been a first down, but dropped by Tyson Bordeaux. 
back-to-back drops by Grambling Tiger receivers. And that has been also something that has plagued Grambling so far in the early portion of this season is drop balls by the receivers in critical situations. Back-to-back -back drops there, and it'll be a turnover on down. Bethune Cookman will take over. Tyson Boudreaux with the drop. Bethune Cookman takes over from its own 45 with an eight-point lead. Welcome to Allstate, where you can bundle and save. Isn't that right, Phil? Ha! What in the world are you doing? I'm in the metaverse, bundling my home and auto insurance. Save up to 25% when you bundle home and auto with Allstate. I have not. I've never heard of Ultra before. Never heard of Ultra before? I couldn't stop running with my Ultras on. They're very cushiony. They're really pretty. I love the look, and they're really lightweight. Toes feel good. I got room. The Ultras, I think they really allowed me to feel what my foot was doing. Toe box feels good. I got a little narrow foot. I wasn't wobbling around. They were extra cushiony while still providing really snug, comfortable support. Ultra is the way to go. I can't fake the smile. Ultra's my new shoe. The path to business success is often unpredictable. Managing your bank account doesn't need to be. Find your flow with powerfully smooth banking that keeps you focused on bringing your vision to life. Discover is accepted at 99% of places in the U.S. Adam, look at what I got. Is that the new iPhone 14 Pro? Yep, with this amazing new camera. Smile! And you got it on Verizon. Even better. I got Verizon's new plan. It includes Apple One. That's Apple Music, Apple TV+, Plus, Apple Arcade, iCloud+. Plus. I hear the acting's pretty good on that one. So is the deal I got from Verizon. iPhone 14 Pro on them. You should get one. Ooh, selfie time. Wow, you can hustle when you need to. Get a new iPhone 14 Pro on us. And get it with one unlimited for iPhone. Only on the network America relies on. Verizon. From out of the blue, every room can be more innovative. With some of that, and a whole lot of this. Meet our exclusive dent and scratch resistant Stain Master Laminate. Check out our most innovative products, only at Lowe's. SWAC football presented by Pepsi Zero Sugar. Bethune Cookman leading 27 19 in the fourth quarter. Matt Peterson with the former Texas running back, Ken Moore. Critical plays. Going Bethune-Cookman's way, only 12 first downs, but in position to win the SWAC opener today. Yeah, Grambling with a couple of critical turnovers in this ball game, going in for a score in the first half, had an interception in the end zone. You see a big running play here. He bounces outside, he's past the 30, cuts upfield and dragged down to the 12. Second big run today for Quayshawn Bird. He had an 81-yard run in the first quarter. And he busts one open here midway through the fourth. And then a big fumble after a big reception earlier in this period. But you see Bird here bouncing it outside. As Jones down there as quarterback as a lead blocker. Wide receivers downfield as he gets it down near the 10-yard line. And Bethune Cookman trying to put this one away late in the fourth. They're already within field goal range. to the 12-yard line. 43-yard run for Bird. They go back to Bird. Another ch chunk play for Bethune-Cookman. You had Bird's 81-yard run in the first half, a kickoff return of 97 yards. Also in the first quarter from Darnell D is the key plays in this game on the offensive side of the ball. Big crowd in Daytona Beach today for this ball game. Second and nine Jones from the 11. Letting the play clock wind all the way down, take as much time off the clock as possible. High snap. Short gain for Bird. Critical thing here for Bethune-Cookman is to protect the football at all costs. Play for the field goal. If you get it into the end zone, great. But if you 
play for the field goal, try to make it a two possession game as you approach four minutes. Grambling in this ball game has outgained the Wildcats 441 yards to 331. Third and nine with four minutes left. Up the middle, he bounces outside. A flag comes in. He's in the end zone, but there is a flag on the play. This might be coming back. Maybe a hold on the left side to allow that gaping hole for Quayshawn Bird. Illegal shift. Outfit, five-yard penalty. It's third down. Illegal shift negates that touchdown. Bethune-Cookman has now overtaken Let's do this in penalties and penalty yardage here today. That will be their 12th penalty of the ball game, 124 yards. Grambling with 13 penalties for 101, so neither coach will be happy about the mistakes that each team has made, but Grambling has made them, as far as the turnovers at critical times, that have erased points off the board. He faked it and kept it. Good speed from Jones, and Jones up to about the 12. As they go for the strip, and a flag comes in, maybe a face mask, as he attempted to strip the football. Yeah, that's Trent Henry, freshman out of Miami, and it may have been a little bit of an extra blow to the face. Let's watch it here. Great fake by Jones to get out of trouble. Now watch the end of the play as Henry makes the tackle and then a little punch to the face. Very unnecessary. I'm sorry, Lawrence Asado. Yeah, eight instead of zero. Lawrence Asadeo, senior from Austin. Transfer from Fort Scott Community College in Kansas. So what that does, it gives you a fresh set of downs. It's going to be first and goal. And now we're grambling with no timeout. That's going to allow Bethune-Cookman to eat up at least another minute and a half to two minutes if they don't get into the end zone. Yeah, the three timeouts used by Grambling in that first drive of the second half, which led to no points, really coming back to haunt them now. And you see the big tight end, Averett, calling for a timeout. Cookman, their final timeout of the half. So no timeouts left for either team now. Mathune Cookman trying to ice out this win. An eight-point lead under four minutes left in Daytona. I've never run in ultras before. I like them. They feel cushiony. They feel stable. I'm loving the super bright colors. It's fun, flashy. You have more room for control. They're also secure around my very narrow feet, which is something that I struggle with. I was resigned to give up on running, but felt oh, great in these ultras. This one sold me. The cushion was excellent to handle that terrain out there. I'm pretty much sold. <laughs> Hashtag, what was I doing before? Honestly, Ultra's my new shoe, and I've clearly been missing out. <laughs> Discover is accepted at 99% of places in the U.S. Sensitive to cat allergens? Purina Pro Plan Live Clear reduces the main allergen in cat hair and dander by an average of 47%. It's one of the many anythings PetSmart has to help you get closer than ever to your cat. Anything for you. PetSmart, anything for pets. Yes. Fix Finder, the most complete free warning light report backed by technician verified fixes. 
out of the blue, every room can be more innovative. With some of that, and a whole lot of this. Meet our exclusive dent and scratch resistant Stain Master Laminate. Check out our most innovative products, only at Lowe's. Three seventeen left after the timeout from Athun Cookman. It's twenty seven nineteen Wildcats. Matt Peterson with Ken Moore. Third and goal from the six. Eight point lead, just trying to avoid any turnover. Full house backfield now. Handed off right side. He's stuffed near the line of scrimmage, and that will bring on the field goal units after a short gain from Jimmy Robinson. Oh, that'll be second down. No gain on the play. Brings up second down. My mistake, Ken, you're right. Second down. Second down and goal. So again, Jones will milk the clock. He will snap it at under five. High snap up the middle, inside the three, and pushed back. They went back to Jimmy Robinson. Yeah, Robinson, 5'7", 175. And of course, Deshaun Bird has been the bell cow so far today. 19 carries for Bird, 162 yards. Third and goal from the three. Clock ticking under two minutes. He bounces off to the left, trying to kill a few more seconds. Wrestle down at the five yard line. We have the third field goal try forthcoming for Dylan Magadale. And if he can convert this one, that'll pretty much shut the door on Gramlin State this afternoon. It's a great effort by both ball clubs here today. Looks like Bethune Cookman. Of course, they still got to convert this extra point now. Or excuse me, this field goal. 22-yard attempt. Lagadam has been good from 20 and 23 yards. So the third field goal from a similar range today. Snap is down, the kick is up and good. Extends the lead to 11 points for Bethune Cookman. Been a really professional performance, Ken Moore, from these Bethune Cookman Wildcats 0-2 on the season. They had a bye week to prepare, and they look like the prepared team. Just one turnover, that was on a kickoff return. They've done it with excellent special teams, a 97-yard kickoff return for a touchdown from Darnell Dees. They had a field goal block at a critical time. And they've just been a really smart football team apart from the penalties. Yeah, the penalties have been the only thing that really hurt them today. You mentioned the one fumble on the kickoff return, but they played a sound game offensively. Jalen Jones, 13 of 18, 137 yards. Mm -hmm two touchdowns, no interceptions. And look, they finally got the big fella involved, Kamari Everett, Averett, the big tight end, five catches, 65 yards and a touchdown. He had that great one-handed snag for a big first down. They got him down inside the red zone today. Marcus Riley had a nice game receiving the ball, four catches for 36 yards. Uh, but Rashawn Bird on the ground has been the bell cow. He had that big 81-yard run in the first quarter to set up their first score. Had a big run on this previous drive to set up the game clinching. Appeared to be field goals for only 55 seconds remaining for Grambling as they trail it now by 11. And this was a 1917 ball game at halftime. Grambling has been shut out here in the second half. Start at the 25 yard line. And the 
So now a time for a miracle for Grambling, down by 11 with 50 seconds left. If they do not come back, it will be a fresh day of frustration for Hugh Jackson's team. They've out first downed Bethune Cookman 26 14, outgained them 441 to 335, but down by 11 points. And really stunning if you just look at Bethune Cookman 14 first downs, they're one for nine on third down. Hard to win a game when you have those, but they've somehow scored 30 points. <laughs> First down, throw to the right side, incomplete. Last, incomplete. From Terrius Hawkins. That, remember on that last drive when Grambling was trying to go down for the tying score, a couple of critical drops yes. on third oh, and yes. fourth down. Yeah, Hawkins is now 22 for 40. Yeah, well, good touchdown pass. interception, but many of those incompletions have been drops. Yeah, probably had about four or five drops today, and there have been a lot of, a lot of drop passes for the Tigers early on in this season. Second down, Hawkins over the middle. Another drop, may have been deflected. Yes. A catchable there for Cash Foley, and it's been a variety of guys. Bean dropped one, we saw Coleman drop one, Tyson Boudreaux as well. Jackson in coverage there for Bethune Cookman. Yeah, let's see, did he get a paw? I think he, if he didn't get a paw on it, he definitely, uh, distorted his vision. So good play by Jackson there, PBI. Jaquan Jackson out of Dothan, Alabama. Third down with 39 seconds left. Over the middle again. Good coverage once again, it's incomplete. Intended receiver was the tight end, Noah Bean. Tough for Grambling. As you look at their schedule, they beat Northwestern State away but lost to Jackson State. And now we'll try and get healthy at home against Prairie View next weekend. Yeah, that game will be in Dallas next weekend at State Fair. Coming up for Bethune-Cookman after this one. They'll take a trip to Alabama A&M as they head down to Huntsville. Fourth and 10 intercepted. And he will... Break a tackle, take it all the way back for a touchdown. There is a flag on the field, but an exclamation point for Bethune Cookman. Guess who? Pick six, Darnell and it's again Dees. Darnell Dees. <laughs> he had the 97 yard kickoff return for a touchdown. He blocked the field goal, and now he has a pick six pending the flag. If it stands. Second interception of the game. Second pick today by Hawkins. That is the second touchdown of the game. Again, watch it here. Plenty of time in the pocket. Just tries to thread the needle and did not see D's undercut the coverage. And he takes it to the house. The result ball. of the play is an interception. Resulting in a touchdown. It will stand. It's official. Second touchdown today. A career day for the sophomore yeah, from Pompano sure. Beach, Florida. 97-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Interception return for a touchdown. Plus, a blocked field goal on no. special teams. A lot of candidates for player of the game yes. today. <laughs> Between him and Averett and Hawkins. The best team in the well, you also have Krayshawn Bird, who's had 19 oh, Bird, carries for 162 Bird. yards. Yes. <sighs> this has got to be one of the most efficient scores you'll ever see. A team with 14 touchdowns is going to have at least 36 points. A team that's converted one third down today, Ken Moore, <laughs> is going to have 36 points. <laughs> well, they've scored. Special teams, yes. defense, yes. and offense. Yes, and the chunk plays. It started with Quayshawn Bird, 81-yard run. Remember they had bad field position. They started their first series on the 12-yard line. 97-yard kickoff return will do that. Not sure what the holdup is now. 
all scoring plays are reviewed, so I'm not sure what's being reviewed, but. Officials are back now. Dylan Mogadam on for the point after touchdown. That is blocked and it is blocked. recovered by Grambling. With 23 seconds to go on the clock, Grambling 19, Bergeron Goodman 36. It'll be a big win for Bethune Cookman after an 0 2 start. See the big guy, Averett, Kamari Averett. Big game today. Yeah, big fella. Go ahead and celebrate. Hey, it's been a frustrating start for the big fella. Only two catches in the first two games. So, you know, he wanted to show up and show out here today. Lewis came back from injury at linebacker position, had a couple of big plays defensively. So, it will be a party on Daytona Beach tonight. Yeah, Rosendo Lewis brought up many times by the Victor Cookman coaching staff. A season debut, six foot two, 240, grad transfer from South Carolina. A long way back for him from injury. 2020 missed with a quad injury. Tore a tendon in the quad, needed surgery. But a guy that played seven games as a true freshman for South Carolina in 2018 has come full circle after injury and now helping Bethune Cook into his first one of the season. Covered by Bethune Cookman. Took a long time for that kickoff to be caught, and they were down there in full coverage right away. And you know Faison what, Wilson was the man who covered it. What's been unsung is the kickoff coverage teams for Bethune Cookman today. Grambling has brought a couple of kicks from deep into the end zone. Devontae Hampton with the big hit. And but that's another the field starter. position has been key in this ball game as Grambling has had to start deep in their territory for the majority of the second half. But, yes, the decision to put more starters on the special team unit has paid off for Bethune-Cookman here today. Special teams has been the difference in the game today. That's Devontae Hampton, and the coaches told us, look at it. The starters are starters for a reason. They may be more fast or more strong or more experienced or just smarter football players. If you can get those guys on a special team, you can elevate your group, and we've seen that today. Absolutely. Closing seconds now from Daytona. They go up the middle, and that should do it. Bethune-Cookman looked like the more vulnerable team at the end of the first half. It felt like Grambling can had all the momentum. They scored the final nine points of the first half. They went into halftime with a 19-17 lead, but... Bethune Cookman has outscored Grambling 19 0 in the second half for this 36 19 win. And again, the second half struggles for the Grambling Tigers continue. They had only scored 16 points this season in the second half, being outscored 87 to 16. So, and they get shut out today in the second half at a 19 17 lead at halftime. But it was all Bethune Cookman in the second half as they dominate in all three phases, offensively, defensively, and on special teams to come out with this big victory here today. Today's player of the game presented by Pepsi Zero Sugar, official partner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And really, by the pick six, it was an easy choice. Kickoff return for a touchdown, a front field goal block, and an interception return for a touchdown. He had a great all-around game. You see the field goal block there by Dees. That helped preserve the lead at that point. And then to cap it off, you see a great defensive play there by Lewis. That stopped a grambling scoring drive. And then the capper, the pick six as Dees 
takes it to the house. And it's party time in Daytona Beach. Bethune Cookman, an emphatic win, 14 first downs, but 36 points, and a deserved victory for the Wildcats. Next they week, go to one and zero in the swap. Yeah, next week they'll take on Alabama A&M as they'll make the trip to Huntsville. Grambling, they'll make the trip to Dallas for the showdown with Purdue. For Ken Moore, I'm Matt Peterson saying so long for Daytona Beach with the final score. Bethune, Cookman 36, Grambling 19. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.